Uh, do not adjust your stream. Do not adjust your stream either. What's going on, guys? My name is Andrew. We got the fib up. We got a little bit of the data that you guys need for the day. We're looking at where did those past resistance and support go right now in progress, right between 7.56, 7.12. EMC currently trending around $7.36. That's about an hour and 45 minutes until we feel good. And I'll be here for you during power hour. So let's just roll that little gong here. Careful, it's gonna be loud. Ding, ding, dong, dong. Just like good old times. What's going on, guys? I'm, a, I'm Andrew. That's Professor Meatball. We're data scientists here in Silicon Valley, and we're here to take, uh, take, take a personality quiz. Boop. We're going to take a personality quiz, statistical personality quiz, because um, a friend of mine showed me this today. A bunch of my friend group is doing it. And it's just a good time to wait out the power hour. I've already sh charted out exactly what I think will be going on. For the day, let me just expand it a little bit more. Probably training right between these. Uh, right now, we're actually getting out of this parametric equalizer right here, about seven dollars and thirty-six cents. So, if we can push past, we would be uh, rejected at about seven dollars fifty-six cents. That's where we're going to find our first point of resistance. Top dog one hundred and one. What's going on, Boomer Sooner? Mo money, mo money, mo money. What's going on, y'all? If it's your if it's your first time here in a long time, go ahead and drop a chat in the chat, and I'm going to talk to you. I'm going to talk directly to you. It's going to be a good time. I'll be sipping that cough. Dr. D, what's going on? <laughs> this is an interactive personality quiz that will match you to fictional characters from a large database based on similarity of description. Background. When the creator of this website would tell people that he published personality tests on the internet, people would ask him if he meant that he worked at BuzzFeed on their Which Character Are You personality quiz. He would then have to explain that he did not and had never been very interested in the style of the test. Those quizzes, these quizzes are very fun as evidenced by their extreme popularity, but they are not that meaningful. Two people who get the same result on the typical example of these tests don't necessarily have much more in common. Hey, by the way, as I'm reading this, if you guys are like, where's the, where's the... Technical analysis is going to happen. It's going to happen in a second. But if you wouldn't mind, slap that like button as you guys come in. We got Taz saying, good afternoon. What are your thoughts? What's going to happen with AMC earnings? Likely Mr. Adam Aaron is going to try and bring the people back on his side. He's not very popular right now, especially with the, with the Ape AMC potential injunction. Uh, so even the, the entire government seems to be against our boy AA. But what, is, what do you guys think? Because I read a couple of your comments. It just doesn't seem like he's making the right decisions for AMC right now. Vincent, what's going on? On Vince from Chi-Town. What's up? I'm from Chi-Town. Isn't that funny? We we blow like many flowers in the wind. Jay Insinia, he's just here for the popcorn. Good, good. Okay, let me see. Uh... They are not that meaningful. Two people who get the same result on typical example of the BuzzFeed test don't necessarily have much more in common than two randomly paired individuals. So for the longest time, this website had not one character match personality quiz, but I guess it was inevitable because here is an attempt at a slightly more scientific, but still very silly, which character are you test? Checking in on this stream. Test instructions. This test is about three minutes. It's been made by a pairs of adjectives with slider between them. For each pair, you must indicate by dragging the slider to where you fall in the spectrum between them. The test is adaptive, and you can test just how select how many questions you want to do with the version option. The median time to complete this is about three minutes. Uh, participation. <laughs> <laughs> These interactive uh, program is provided for entertainment and information only, blah, blah, blah. So is the stream. You see the, the timer clicking down slowly? That is, uh, that's the timer that we'll be following for the stream. Got to get through power hour first, and then we'll be on our way to the Q4 earnings call. Tick, tick. You guys are here early? Hey, welcome. If you guys are here because the stream is already over, uh, I probably already fast forward you all the way to the end where you can watch the, uh, the earnings call because uh, I'm not going to say anything once the earnings call begins, but I will give a couple of my feelings um, about what's going to happen. Begin assessment. 
El Rene uh, the 13th, Andrew, good to see your face, my friend. Good to see you. Rick Ramos made a nice chunk of change on a lovely 7% pop this morning at open and ready to make more money. What's up, Rick? Okay, number one, nerd to jock. Mm, not really good at sports. I like working out. I'm a big, I'm a big believer of working out. I just did some uh, fly curls today. So probably 90, probably 69% nerd. Is that funny? That seems right, actually. Okay, selfish to altruistic. Christy says, what happened to the Muffin Man? What happened? Meatball, do you know? Do you know what happened to the Muffin Man? <laughs> uh, let's give Meatball a treat at 100 likes. Where are we at, Where are we at right now? 23, okay. So keep those likes coming. We're going to give Meatball a treat as soon as we hit 100 likes. That's always fun. Boondog says, missed you. I missed you too. Okay, selfish to altruistic. Ooh. See, I always... I, I tended more towards altruism more recently but i think it's still pretty oh god I don't, i'm gonna be like a vague gray goo kind of guy if i keep choosing in in the middle but i'm pretty sure most people are median let's see social to reclusive i do like my me time but this is probably going to be closer to that i'm liking my me time more and more often creative to conventional Ooh, nothing no, no kind of conventional. I hate convention. Probably gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna 100% this. AMC holding tight right now. If I can see the VWAP, let me pull up some of these other indicators. Can I see a VWAP? Oh, there it is. Settings. It's just volume. Hey, nice. Uh, 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 uh. I'm writing off of that uh, 15 minute ch chart right now where we had that buy signal all the way down here. Let's go to the, let's go to the five minutes so we can get a little closer. Alrighty. Can you turn the music a little bit? No problem. Just a ton of bit. There you go. Dan Pandina. Hard to believe that we have been in this play for years. And yeah, here we are. Diamond headed AF. Chrissy says, how do, do you think that we will squeeze this time bigger than the last one? Probably talking about the gamma squeeze from last time. It's, it's hard to tell whether or not this will be a gamma squeeze. That's one of the major buying catalysts that we will need to be able to see uh, a lot of price movement. Craig with an E at the end, says, hello. Hello, Craig. Oh, it's Craig, not Craig. Okay, frugal versus lavish. Yeah, I don't spend a lot of money on almost anything. Mm, otherwise, I wouldn't have mo money. So probably, probably pretty close there. Alpha versus beta. Hmm. That's hard to say. This one is uh, this one's a tough chase. Juxtaposed says Andrew Mo, the professor looking distinguished as usual. How has Silicon Valley been? It's been wet, and also first time seeing a lot of a uh, lot, lot of kids playing in the snow because these kids have never seen snow. Uh, they're playing in like, the smallest puddle ever. Let me see if I can find a video. It is like a tiny, tiny puddle of snow. Uh, let's see. Fupa Phoenix says, Hey, Mo, been a long time since I joined you. Cool of you to stream this. Thank you. You're welcome. And not a problemo whatsoever. Blue Collar versus Ivory Tower. Hmm. Probably less. Probably less so. That's hard to say. Because this is these are really huge differentiations. I hate being the median. Arcane or mainstream? I'm not ticking those talks. I feel older every day. I feel like I'm an old man. Every, if, if I'm not sure how to lean, I'm just going to lean 69. Artistic versus scientific. Ooh, why are those two different sides of the extremes? That's confusing. Tony Torres says, I voted no today. 
If you guys, uh, first of all, where are y'all from? And second of all, if you, if you feel comfortable, tell us why you voted how you voted. Uh, if you've already voted, of course. If you are, haven't voted yet, don't let us sway you. Do your democratic duty. Your duty. <laughs> Artistic versus scientific. Mm, that's really hard to say. Because I have an aptitude for science, but I have a passion for art. So that's really hard to say. I'll say I'm 51. 49. There it is. Emotional versus logical. Mm -hmm. That's probably 69 right there. Uh, let's see. Jose D says, I vote for Pedro. <laughs> Braveheart Pab Pabalan says, Andrew, do your magic. Make it squeeze. Go ahead. Make my day. Hey, if you guys are just walking in, welcome. Once we get to 100 likes, Meatball's going to get a treat. Have a good day. I was like, ah, sitting, sleeping, having completely no thoughts. <laughs> just, just being a chill. Just making chill. Stinky versus fresh. <laughs> I don't think I'm stinky. I don't think I'm stinky at all, actually. How about 0% stinky? Strict versus lenient. Hmm. God, it's almost... I hate being a gray goo of a human, but it's really just... I'm pretty lenient. I'm pretty... I like to I like to appear strict, but I'm not. Don Caesar Shadim... Hey, it's been a minute. Hey, what's going on, Don? Look at that platinum diamond button right next to it. And you know, just before showing up, Don, I'm going to give me ball a treat early. Because we like seeing people from the Moon Platoon show up. Go out. This is from Don. Just by just by popping in the chat, saying hi. Here you go, bud. Yeah. We'll give him another treat at a hundred likes. Meatball sleepy says anonymity. Chris C says, I'm from the UK, haven't voted yet. I'm not too interested in the vote as I bought in for the squeeze and have a feeling the vote is a yes regardless of how the retailer will vote. Not if the government has anything to say about it. Covered this in the last video, but uh, yeah, the government has a couple of things to say about whether or not Adam Aaron's going to even be allowed to do it at all. Uh, we have Fuek Nguyen says, uh, no to all. I like the naked short shares get away 90% plus they will push it down after RS. Juxtapose says, I see, I still think Professor Meatball was a catalyst this whole time. Seriously, though, it's been a hell of a ride since the beginning. It's been an absolute pleasure and more pleasure to come. Rarefield Tennis says, hey, Andrew, long time no see. How's it been? How are you doing? We do a personality quiz inside. It's been so long we have to get to know each other. Are we demonic or angelic? <laughs> if you guys want to help me vote, I'm going to spend more time on each question so you guys can actually have a, have a, have a choice. Probably... This is a hard... This doesn't make any sense, actually. I'm not demonic. But I'm not... Not religious. Next. <laughs> Dunce or a genius? Easy. <laughs> Haunted or blissful? Hmm. Oh, this is like how... Yeah. I like to be blissful, but I'm pretty pretty haunted. He says, Mark Arnold says, who wants pho? Yeah. Hand raised. Halfway into the power hour already. No, sorry. 15 minutes in the power hour. I'm checking checking this right here. 15 minutes into power hour. AMC is still holding around the same levels that we charted earlier. Had a bounce around 7, oh, 14 cents. Rejected at 754. This is the fib sequence that I was uh, uh, mapping out. This also has the same bounce from the $5.85 that happened about two days ago. And uh, we already pushed past the very top of this earlier today when we crossed about nearly $8.55. David says, Meatball looks way more distinguished and mature. Okay, bossy versus meek. I'm so not bossy. Not a great... I'm not a great person to boss people around. 
I'm usually like, excuse me. Feisty versus gracious. <laughs> uh, Benjamin Cross says, time for us small accounts win. Can't wait for a squeeze. Let's go good earnings. Uh, Slow Mo Joe says, how the hell did TRKA suddenly get noticed by all the YouTubers? TRKA. Let me see if I can actually pull it up real quick. Turka. Up 84% in the past month, but down 44% since the last six months. Interesting. Ivory Scarbo, like the old days, deja vu, 2021. Yeah, wow, I'm, I'm old. I am, I'm crusty. Um, I'm out of coffee. It's, it's, it's truly the worst of all worlds. Feisty versus gracious. How is that the different, how is that different? Feisty, gracious. Pretty sure I have more gratitude than feist. Sometimes I'm pretty feisty. No, I'm pretty gracious usually. I'll do 1% feist. Deranged versus reasonable. Chrissy said, you don't look a day over 45, pal. Thanks. If I do say so myself. Uh, yeah, I'm keeping, keeping fit. Uh, and I'm very reasonable. Why is it deranged? A little too reasonable, actually. Orderly versus chaotic. Mm. There's a method to the chaos, honestly. Man, this is not taking me three minutes. Gain says, go meatball, go meatball, go. Hear that meatball? They hope that you go. Ooh, 13 more likes and meatball gets that treat. Slow-mo justice didn't mean for that to sound angry. Oh, <laughs> my bad. Uh, Slow-mo justice Palantir is dead duck crap revenue. Hmm. Let me see if I can dig up a couple of things about Palantir first. Da, 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 da. Juvenile versus mature. I like to think I like to think I have like this childlike wonder. Like, I can turn on the mature, but I don't like being mature. That's hard. I'm, I'm constantly in the middle. Right there. Poisonous? <laughs> Toxic versus nurturing. Why would it be poisonous? No, 0% poison. I don't have any poison in me. Outlaw versus sheriff. Earthling69 says, what test are you doing? This is supposed to be a statistics open source psychometrics project. It's supposed to statistically match you to fictional characters without some BuzzFeed person on the other side deciding for you. Come on, says, let's go. That's funny because your name is come on. Missed you, Andrew, says Jordan Dillard. I missed you guys so much. It's just about time that we cross into the earnings zone do 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 that's all i can that's all i can hum before it becomes a uh an issue hey that's 100 likes okay well then let's give meatball a treat let's give meatball another treat at 200 but for right now thank you guys for slapping that like button here you go here you go that treats courtesy of you guys slapping the like Outlaw versus sheriff. I don't think I'm a sheriff. I think we're breaking rules. High tech versus low tech, but I don't TikTok. Does that count? Probably statistically more high tech. Probably gonna give that 95. Jason says, what do you think about after hours trading on AMC? Yeah, it's, it's gonna be wild. At like every earnings call, it's it's absolutely going to be wild. Slow Mojo says Meatball's head snapped around when they said treat. You hear that? Mm. 
Yeah. Deep ball is going to turn 10 this year. He is double digits. He is a <laughs> he is a veteran dog. Obedient versus rebellious. Mm, a rebel. A rebel a tiny bit. JP Investment says, dang, you might have had 10,000 when I started watching. Hey, what's up? The times fly by. What kind of breed is Mr. Meatball? He is a um, he is a golden Korg. Here, let me see if I can show you this photo. He's a golden Korg. You see half his face? Half of his face is like the gold and half his face is like the Korg. If you, can, if you saw the time on my phone, yes, I am on the West Coast. <laughs> it is still early. Sometimes too early. Indulgent versus sober. Uh, I don't think these are the right axes of, of describing people, but sure that. Deep versus shallow. No, I'm pretty... Pretty 14, and that's deep. Uh, Space Agent says, hey, what's up? By the way, I smell some perfectly popcorn positive news. That's right. We have some popcorn positive news. Let me let me talk to you guys about the AMC popcorn news. Popcorn. Ahead of the Oscars, AMC promises movie theater popcorn at home. You will no longer need to visit the movie theater to buy movie theater popcorn, thanks to a new collaboration between AMC and Walmart. The movie theater company is launching a line of called AMC Perfectly Popcorn with, wow, you were, that, that, you could have made it ape somehow. AMC Popcorn Edible. <laughs> no, that's not right. Eat epic popcorn, something like that, with options for both ready-to-eat and microwavable popcorn. It will be available at Walmart on March 11th, a day before the Oscars. Shoppers will be able to get that movie theater popcorn taste and aroma without a trip to the movie theater, AMC said on a release. Why don't you just stream the Oscars from, from AMC? Anyway, the ready-to-eat popcorn will retail for $4 and the microwavable variety for $5. The flavors will include classic butter, extra butter, and lightly salted. 95th Oscar will take place the day after, March 12th at 5 p.m. We televised on ABC, can be streamed on services like YouTube TV. Sick. Uh, let's see. Jason says, give him another treat. I like the stream. Hell yeah. Hey, hey, heck yeah. <laughs> like the stream. Want to give him another treat at 200. Vin Vin says, my man, Andrew, how you doing? Hey, what's going on? Good to see you. Uh, let's see. Experience. Experience, that's right. Okay, hold on. Wild versus tame. I think I'm very tame. Maybe, actually. Creepy versus disarming. Mm. That's quite the dichotomy. AMC's still holding on that $7.34. Bing chilling. Let's see. Where are we hanging out? I went to the minutes just to get a little bit closer. What time is the earnings call? Hey, I have a countdown to the earnings call right here. It's on screen. Probably not creepy. Lovingly, yeah, I kind of have to have an SAT. Oh, like scientific, <laughs> uh, yeah, probably 90%. Loyal versus traitorous, 100% loyal, masculine versus feminine, 69. All right, 
Adventurous versus stick in the mud. CT says, probably not creepy. <laughs> Chrissy says, I'll be asleep by then. Yep, what a time to be asleep. 5 p.m. or 2 p.m. The, the voob on this live stream is super, the vibe on this live stream is super chill. I need a fish tank in the background. Ooh, I can just get a virtual one. Bum, ba -dum, ba -bum. Blub, blub. Adventures versus stick in the mud. Yo, hi, adventure. I, I'm always down to say yes, except sometimes, 98%. Formal versus intimate. 69% intimate, yeah, that's good. Sarcastic versus genuine. 69% sarcastic. Awkward versus charming. See, it's really hard to, to think of your life in statistics because you also have to think about it not based on how not based on your max percentage of what you think is awkward versus charming, but actually based on macro statistics of what is the most awkward possible versus the most charming possible. Let's see. M. Harv Yars is when earnings. It's about, it's been about an hour. We have a countdown right here. I'm in the call. Hello? It's coming from inside the call. <laughs> Uh, Apple Pie says, great to see you. It's great to see you live today. You're a decent human being. Hey, Apple Pie. Appreciate that. You're a decent human being. You guys are decent human beings for being on this stream. People don't get to hear that enough. <laughs> CT. <laughs> Aw. Aw, Swami. Good to see you. Slow Mojo says, I'm thinking of a three-digit number. <laughs> I'm thinking with my little mind of a digit of number higher than three. Charming versus awkward. I'm a little bit of both. Oh, I'm done. I've completed the test. Will you be willing to write some characters to make this test better for everyone? Uh, oh, I get to rate the test. Okay. Thank you. Name any of these uh, these works of fiction in the list that you think you can confidently rate the personality of. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna fail. I think <laughs> I'm gonna fail. Uh, FC says, "Yo, Andrew, you know when the next time Powell speaks?" Um, let me see. Actually, that's, I should know this. Next Fed meeting is gonna be. I'm on the calendar for the Federal Reserve System, and, whoa, that's February. Oh, March 2nd, we have a governor. I'm just going to search Jerome Powell. Oh. Nothing coming up in March. RR says, how's your music going? Hey, it's going great. Thanks for asking. We had a stage reading in December in Silicon Valley, and we're going to hopefully push it to SF sometime later this year. That'd be cool. I'd like that. And if you're just coming in, hey, you want to give me a ball a treat? Let's slap that like button as more people show up so that we can uh, give them a treat at 200 likes. Okay. American Sniper. Never heard of that. White Collar. I think I've heard of that. Fault in Our Stars. I think I've heard of that. John Green, right? Entourage, Outer Banks, Grey's Anatomy, Gotham. I can speak to what the Batman series is generally. House of Gucci, I actually have seen this. Okay, <laughs> so I can do House of Gucci. Swami says, has it been a good year? Well, it has been a year. It's been longer than a year. Isn't that funny? That's how time works. That's kind of crazy. Let me spit out this gum real quick. Now you don't have to listen to me chew. Okay. Pirates of the Caribbean, sort of. I sort of remember Euphoria, but not really. I sort of remember Rogue One. Oh, this is terrible. 
Control Alt Delete. What is that? Portrait of a Lady on Fire. Doctor Horrible Sing Along Blog. Okay, I can do two out of like twenty things. Ah, oh, this is terrible. Yeah. Kangaroo versus a dolphin. Huh? What? C Pimpin 100 says, Yo, Drew, do you think news will be positive enough to pump aftermarket and, con and continue through Wednesday morning? I think the news will be fairly positive. I think that um, fundamentals will be good. I think that um, they're going to talk like more bullishly about what they hope the uh, turning ape stocks into AMC shares is going to do. Um, then people are going to get upset. So if they talk as little as possible about that, and about the injunction. Just talk about popcorn. I think we'll be doing pretty okay. It's funny how easy these things uh, fly apart. Deviant Way says, stoked to finally be back at it. What up, y'all? And Sean Carter says, what up, Andrew? What's going on? It's just good to see you guys. It's been a trip and a half. Okay, does anybody, has anyone else watched this movie? Do you think Patrizia Reggiani is a kangaroo or a dolphin? Now be serious. <laughs> Make sure you're serious. Uh, go, 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 go. Uh, let's hold on. I'm just reading your chats real quick. Ag aggravator says the pump gonna be bigger than the Pope on his. Huh? The Pope? I, I'm I'm missing something about the Pope. <laughs> Juxtapose says it's like a hair trigger. Just don't sneeze. Uh, <laughs> dolphin. She she's kind of a dolphin. She's not much. She well, she's she fights people like a kangaroo. She's really like a dolphin. No, she's like a loyal kangaroo. She's a kangaroo. I don't know actually. Let's skip that. What is Maurizio Gucci? What is Adam Driver at fall? Cringing away, or a welcoming experience? It's kind of cringy. I think I answered that. Where does she fall? Disturbing versus enchanting. A little bit of both. Probably a little more enchanting. Sassy versus chill. It gets a little sassy later. Divine versus earthly. This is terrible. I have no idea. Fulfilled versus unfulfilled. I think he is, ends up largely unfulfilled. Intuitive or analytical? Probably this. I don't think she analyzes much. Delicate versus coarse. It's kind of delicate coarse. Uh, Dario Moshiera says, Andrew, finally back to go live. Hello, Professor Meatball. What's going on? You hear that, Professor? You hear that, Prof? Let's see. 70 likes and we'll get uh, Meatball another treat. Oh, Aggravator. The Pope don't get none because he's the Pope. See, that's why... I, that's why I'm not um, the Pope because I don't... <laughs> Inappropriate or seemly? Probably. Naughty. Nice. He's a little naughty. He's, she's very resentful. Good manners, usually. Don't know. Quivering. Who's a quiver? Wired or tired? Wired. Lumberjack. Fearful. Red or blue? <laughs> oh my god, what does that mean? Uh, harsh or gentle? Yeah. Bear or a wolf? Bear. No, I should have said a wolf. Chunky. Chameleon. Engineerial. Absent-minded. 
Progressive. Okay. How much of How to Gucci have you seen it? All of it. When was the last time you've watched House of Gucci? This year? Technically, it was last year. It's good. What is my age? I am 28. Ugh, cringy. Is English my first language? Now. I am a data scientist. Can we use the answers for our database? Yes. Oh, I'm Jim from The Office. 90% <laughs> Jim. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's good. Sir Holdo Holdington, hello. Good to see you. I like solely, so for Meatball, can you get his treat? Yes, that's good. Have you seen Avatar 2? Says Chrissy. Absolutely amazing movie in 3D. Uh, Dario says, hello from Italy. Buongiorno. Ciao. Molto bene. Here are my traits versus, here's my traits versus their traits craft below. So the, this is, it's really hard to read, but you're supposed to see a pretty much a straight line for linearity. Oh. Uh, I'm requiring people to complete a market research poll to, to see, to, to unlock. Oh, old. I could just skip the survey. When thinking of laptops, what comes to mind? Apple. <laughs> what app? What laptops are you aware of? MacBook. Which of these do you currently have? Did you purchase any of these laptops? Which one would you consider? Sure, I'll consider these. Probably that one. When do you plan on purchasing a laptop? I'm just giving a lot of information. 90% Jim. Uh, thank you, Dario. That's very generous of you. DeviantWay says AMC FTD closeout date was announced for March 17th. Hey, that's luck of the Irish. And remember, we did have a March 17th um, Roaring Kitty message from long, long ago. Anybody remember that? Remember what he said? What did he do and say? That's a great trivia question. What did Roaring Kitty do and say on St. Patrick's Day? I think it was this, uh, last year or the year before that. Time is an enigma. I am the primary purchasers. Uh, uh, uh. How old are your children? Oh. How many times have you viewed content? Actually, I don't watch TV. Well, I do watch TV on like the treadmill. So I do actually. <laughs> Connected TV, mobile, PC, cable. God, I'm so tired of this. Oh, I'm so tired of this survey. Okay, here we go. Here's the actual list. Adam Salazar says, hey everyone. AMC to the moon, what's going on? If you guys are just walking in, slap that like button. Just do it for fun and for Meatball Street. At 200 likes, we'll give Meatball another treat. And in about 20 minutes, the market will have closed for the day. AMC still is trending in about $7.30. Okay, we have Han Lu from Fast and the Furious. Is that the Chinese guy? Yeah. <laughs> Why? Why? Why can't I be the rock? I guess we... I guess we like different things. Mark Watney from The Martian. Mike Ross from this from Suits. Mike is the main guy, right? No. Oh yeah, he's the he's the he's the other main guy. <laughs> Patrick Jane from The Mentalist. Barry Allen from The Flash. Cisco Ramon from The Flash. Marty McFly from Back to the Future. Sam Seaborn from West Wing. Neo from The Matrix. I am the Neo from The Matrix. I don't, can't believe none of these are Batman. Maybe he's, maybe he's artistic, actually. He's not scientific at all. Tyrion Lannister. 
from eight, uh, from Game of Thrones. Now, that's pretty good. We have... And then just a bunch of other people that I don't know. We have Kumail Nanjiana from The Big Sick. Bumblebee from Transformers. How can Bumblebee have, <laughs> have the same personality as me? Uh, LGB M777 says, It's no secret Roaring Kitty is a time traveler. <laughs> Deviant Way says, McFly, you slacker. Next to says, Harry Potter. Where? Is there Harry Potter up here? Chris Washington from Get Out. Who is that again? I hope it's a... Yeah, few. Phew! <laughs> Woo. Uh, let's see. Echo from Arcane. Hey, Echo. I like Echo. So uh, it looks like I'm a bunch of like free thinkers and like guys who look, who turn their face to look at the camera to, to react. Um, maybe like maybe a slacker. Because what is Marty McFly? Like a free thinker kind of slacker guy. Rave. Uh, oh, Spike. I'm 82% Spike. Yeah, look at that. Now, when you take a look at his hair, take a look at this guy. <laughs> El Cool says, I'm going to just eat AMC popcorn for the rest of the year. Doppelganger says, all complimentary characters seem sus. Yeah, huh. Where's the Voldemort's? <laughs> Juxtapose says, can I do this test? Seems fun. Yeah, you can. Here, I'll put this, I'll put this test in the chat so you guys can uh, you guys can have fun but if i do y'all are 150 likes if we want to get meatball a tree we got to slap it slap that like real quick you guys come in because we got about an hour to chill during the after hours we have john connor from terminator 2 lois lane from smallville Pushing your pillow. Sirius Black from Harry Potter. Albus Dumbledore from Harry Potter. George Weasley from Harry Potter. Why are they all 80%? Seems like almost anybody could have been um, the leader of Hogwarts. <laughs> Seems like almost anybody could have had the aptitude for Headmaster of Hogwarts. Juxtaposes, how did they know you had luscious locks? What? Yeah, exactly. How do they know these things? AA says, do people think that AMC will run out tomorrow after earnings? That's hard to say. Usually AMC is like, uh, has most of its variation right before and during earnings. Lucius Fox from Dark Knight. Uh, oh, Mulan. It seems like Mulan matches with almost everyone. Danny Ocean from Ocean's Eleven. Mr. Ocean himself. Andy Dufresne. Uh, Agent Coulson from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Sailor Jupiter. Okay, that's my sailor. Sailor Jupiter <laughs> is badass, not weak ass. Feminist, not sexist. <laughs> that's good. Okay, good. Uh, Tyler Locke from... So I'm the lock of lock and key, not key. 
We have Alice Cullen from Twilight. I'm Eduardo Saverin from uh, Social Network. Oh no! It's the amazing actor Andrew Garfield. Two Andrews in a row. I'm Benjamin Button. Who am I the least like? Let's go to the bottom. 20%. Okay, these are people that I'm least like. <laughs> Bobby Fan, what's up? We talked about AMC's technical levels in a, se uh, a few seconds ago. Many, many seconds ago. But we saw that AMC had bounced off of this support down here at $7.11. So then I created this fib sequence based on that price action and the bounce from earlier two days ago, about $5.85. That's where we touched the top. We got overbought at about $8.29. We actually pushed all the way in the beginning of the day to $8.57. But now we are being locked and suppressed underneath $7.55. $7.55. Limit says, uh, what TV show movie would you put yourself in, Andrew? Hmm. I like a lot of like Black Mirror dystopian things, so I wouldn't want to put myself in those. <laughs> Lawrence Cap. Good to see you. Yeah, slap that like. Okay, people that I'm least like is Petunia Dursley. I'm nothing like this, like Harry Potter's stepmom. Ooh. Cornelius Fudge. I'm nothing like the Sheriff of Nottingham. <laughs> this is a fun little test. Good way to kill the time while we are waiting for the 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 time to beat, which is about another 57 minutes, 25 seconds. What else are you guys getting into these days? Anybody watching anything good? Uh, Lawrence Cop says, uh, Andrew, I and Bob Ross Happy Accidents Betrayal and Greed on Netflix for eight minutes. Weirdly appropriate claim to fame. Bob Ross Happy Accidents Betrayal and Greed. What? Are those TV shows? Oops. I need to look this up. So, what are we looking at a second ago? We saw that we had originally 0% availability, and now we have 600,000 shares at a fee of 194%. That's still a ridiculous fee, even though it's not close to our 700% top. Now we said that the Ortex estimated short interest has greatly risen in just the last few uh, trading periods. So you can see at the end. Can I see at the end? See right there. Big uptick from about 2349 to all the way up to 2583. These are important margins. These are these this is what makes or breaks. Limit 22 says, can't wait for the next series of Walking Dead, the one with Maggie and Negan. Man on, the, Man on the Moon says, I just watched Catch Me If You Can for the first time ever yesterday. J. Kim is saying, uh, realistic expectation on this earnings. It's likely going to be depending on what they want to talk about. If on the chopping block they want to talk about turning Ape shares into AMC, likely not going to be very bullish. However, if they manage to walk around that, talk about Oscars instead, then we can have a good chance there. 
Lord's Cop says, it's a Netflix movie. I got to go see me some Bob Ross Betrayal and Greed. Oh, you know what? I actually have watched it. I have watched it. I don't know why I just didn't. It slipped my mind. Yeah, yeah. Happy Accidents for Chill and Greed. That's right. I watched it. It's with the Kowalskis. Yeah, that was some that was some scary stuff. Can you imagine that happening to your happy accident tree man? It's like House of Gucci. Am I gonna have to ring that bell soon? About ten minutes. Blackberry says hello. Hello, Andrew. Good to see you. Thanks for the engagement. Hey, good to see you too. Deviant Ways says, movies are a waste of time, especially when I can be spending that time learning. Hey, what are you learning about? I love learning too. I'm a big, I'm a big learner. <laughs> Nicole, you gotta... <laughs> Nicole, you push. There you go. There you go. Good boy. Good boy. It's okay. Sometimes you gotta push. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, hmm. It's the same chart. Options data. Right now we got 55,543 in the money calls, onto 38,000 out. The potential 38,000 at $8. So you guys are talking about $8 strike, right? You have potentially double the amount of calls in the money that would be rolling into if we hit $8. 600,000 shares available to the borrowers at a 200% interest. 1,500 available based on allocation. Dopey Opie says, yo, I just found out the rocket, the money bag, and the stock going up emojis have been banned by the SEC. <laughs> banned by the SEC to be used in, in which form? There's a lot of ways you can use that. You can use it in this chat right now. Throw me some rockets in the chat. Go ahead, show me, show me what rockets look like. Otherwise, I will never know. Justin Wu, what's up? Good to see you. It's been too long. It's been a hot second and a half. Arya T and Doge Pound Gang 8 throwing those rockets in the chat. Thank you, guys. I'm pretty sure if all of you press the like button right now, we'll have exactly enough likes to give Meatball another treat. He's going to get a treat at 200 and at 250. That's double the treats. Double wombo combo. Ninety percent gym. Forty percent skill, eighty percent Tyrion. <laughs> McFly. We also got rockets from Ifu, Super Agent, Pex Bad, and Justin Wu. Hey, what's up? Mike Mars says, "Andrew, my man, just wanted to thank you again for helping me make ten thousand dollars last year." Hey, that's that's the piece of the cake that is yours to bake. I appreciate you for sharing that. This was a nice little screenshot for me. SEC can get bent. There's Mike Mars' little comment right there. Super Agent says, how'd your musical go? We good. We, we're, it takes a long time to make a musical happen. So we had a stage reading uh, in December. Now we're going to create more sheet music. We're going to revise the instrumental 
uh, recordings, get some demos out perhaps, and then we're going to hopefully get to the next stage. Oh my goodness. He's giving us face today. He's giving us the cutest possible. Like no other. Hey, about five minutes, I'm going to ring that bell. And we all slap that like together. Monte Barger and Danny Sweet giving us those uh, rockets in the chat. Deviant Way says SEC can get bent. My hand's in it, so you can't really hear it yet. I think a days to cover, just bounce back and forth. It, just, it follows the price action uh, literally inversely. Starting back in December 8th, that's my birthday. Starting about December 8th, it's been trending in exactly inversely to the price action. What time is the earnings call of 5 p.m. Uh, EST? MML. Sure, I'll take a look. I'll do it with Lux Algo. It's pretty cool. Slaps right on top of the free trading view software right here. But you guys get buy and sell signals, which makes it a lot easier to figure out what's happening. Moonbound Mining Co. Yeah, it's not a lot of data, but you can you, you can still see the buy and sell signals with Lux. What I told you to buy right around uh, one cent, and then you would have been caught that rocket up. It's a penny stock. It's working its way up. So this was the statistical psychometrics. Who are you most like? in the world, in, fi in all of fiction. These people I'm not very much like, such as, uh, Terry, such as uh, Dean Armitage. That's good. Or Krusty the Clown. Or Barney Gumbel. Eleanor Sung Young, which crazy rich Asian was she? Ah, she was the she was the everything everywhere all at once crazy. Yashua Eleven says banning rockets is like Gene Simmons saying he has the rights to sign of the devil hand gesture. <laughs> Chad Meek says complete the sentence. Popcorn gives people blank. Gives people tendies. I think we just passed 200 likes. Yeah, exactly. So this treat is for uh, Meatball. Thanks to you guys. Like I said, another another treat at 250. Here you go. Good boy. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna ring this bell in a second. Popcorn gives you wings. Let's see. Bob Ross betrayal, greed, and etc. <laughs> Ryan Bienvenue says, do you think we beat earnings? Sorry, just jumping in. It's likely that we do have an earnings beat. It's unclear whether or not that's going to be the buying catalyst that we've been looking for. Most likely, we're, we're trying to pay attention to something that is either innocuous or not directly harmful. That would be, that would honestly be good. <laughs> 
Amy Gilbert says, Missed you, Andrew. Glad you're back. Oh, I'm happy to be back. And I think that is one o'clock on the dot. It's 4 p.m., right? <laughs> Markets close at a weird time. Amy Gilbert, happy to be back. We were just figuring out that I am 90% Jim. 90% Jim, 30% skill. Oh, these are a thousand. Yeah, out of 2,000 fictional characters, I am 90% Jim. So that's good. Daniel says, it's 3 p.m. in Chicago. Hey, Chai Town, what's going on? Where else in America y'all from? And then if you're not from America, where else in not America are you guys from? Bobby says it's about how much debt they have taken, have or taken off. What time does it start? So it's been about 43 minutes. I've been chilling on this call for longer than I can recall. What's going on as you guys come on in? Slap that like button because we're going to give Meatball another treat at 250. Also, comment out where, where you guys been. What have you guys been doing today? You guys been watching other YouTube videos? You guys been taking care of your day job? What have you been doing? What have you been up to? <laughs> we got some, we got, do you new, new, oh shoot, I just went to Vietnam too. Um, we have DN saying they're from Vietnam. We got Brandon O'Brien saying Minnesota gang. We got M. Haryar saying of Memphis 3, Joel Santos saying Virgin Island. Ill Gates says uh, Agent Jim from that one episode where they pranked Dwight. <laughs> That's right. Uh, popcorn selling at Walmart exclusively is great, says MC. Christian Sigard says Denmark. Kirk Saban says Germany here. Uh, John Campbell says Pennsylvania. Turtle says New York. A. Willemus. A. Willis M. Maximus C. says oh, Hogwarts Legacy. Uh, Sir Modzalot says, do you think popcorn in retail stores is going to be a significant way they can reduce debt long term? Uh, <laughs> no, but it'll be tasty. It'll be tasty. Well, who's thinking about getting popcorn before the Oscars? I'll eat some popcorn. <laughs> Trading market AICDIO. Uh, Joe Long says, Steve, Tampa, Florida. Uh, Danny Sweet says, United Kingdom. Anthony Doan says, the Bay Area. Ari up T says, Baltimore MD in the house. Or Holdo Holdington says, Rhode Island. Nix G from Las Vegas. Car Gary Watson from Dallas. Turtle says, I'm just sitting at work, drinking a bottle of Prosecco. Hey, muscle tough. I don't have any more coffee. <laughs> I have to look at the Stonka Tracker. So we're still looking at about 600,000 600, shares available, 194% borrow fee. This is starkly different from yesterday when that stock went up about 30% uh, and had 0%, zero shares left available. AMC looking uh, essentially entirely inverse of the days to cover in terms of the price action. As soon as December rolled around, we had days to cover rip through the high heavens, exactly inverse of the price action. And then every time it nearly met in the middle is when the price action went to the very tip. Now we see days to cover 3M dropping once again. Ortex estimated short interest going absolutely haywire. And now, and now I'm a 90% gym, okay? <laughs> and a 88% Scott, uh, Spike. <laughs> Juxtapose says my top character was Ender from Ender's Game. Hey, that's awesome. I have done a D and D uh, Ender's Game simulation. Let's see. From eight forty back to about seven thirty. What's that about? Says David Ramones. I I charted out exactly what that's about. 
we are we saw significant support at about seven dollars and thirteen cents. We just dropped beneath it, which means that now on the minute chart at least we're underneath our final Bollinger of oversold. All that said is that we would likely then move out to the five minute chart, see potential relief lower about six dollars and ninety cents. The next level of support that we were rejected on in on Monday and eventually supported on was six dollars and seventy five cents. Next level about six forty. Now, if we're looking at higher levels, we were rejected today about eight dollars and thirty cents. Getting closer to a potential bounce here. That's what we'll be looking at. Let me just get this on our bigger screen here. Bigger screen. Put this on our smaller screen. There we go. All right. I, I was I was trying to note where you guys are coming from. Here we go. We have TNT from Savannah. Uh, Nate Sims from the middle of a cornfield, Iowa. That's beautiful. Ill Gil Bates says, I haven't had popcorn since the, the 90s. Uh, Calvin247 AMC GME BTC Shiba says, Madison, Wisconsin, brother. Turtle says, free booze when you own a liquor store. Hey, that's cool. <laughs> Dandy Jandon. Uh, sorry. Uh, Hill House says, popcorn doesn't work for my gut. Boondock says South Dakota. Uh, Luke Castillo says fundamentals don't matter during earnings. This has historically been true. Doge Pound Gang 8 says Oceanside, California. TNT says AMC earnings what time? It's pretty soon. If you're in this room... Sooner than you think. Hey, you guys just got a 250 likes. Let's get another treat from Meatball, about 300 likes. Which means if every one of you slapped that like, no matter where you are, in your car, in your stream to your big device in the middle of your TV room, and with a bottle of Prosecco in the middle of your liquor store, either way, slap that like button so that Meatball can get one more treat. This one's for you for 250 likes. Uh, Earthling says, on the top of Mount Dora in Florida. Lino says, in the ghetto of Santa Ana. Marcus says, greetings from Germany. Theodore from Alaska. Josh Page says, out of coffee here in Oceanside, California also. Ugh. Richard says, unfortunately, my puts are printing. Oregon High Roller says, Florence, Oregon. I love popcorn. Let's go. Richie09, yo, good to see you still there. Hey, it's good to be here. AMC finding some support at $7.00. After hours, feeling the pressure. Just zoom in a little bit. Enhance. Days to cover 3M absolutely tanking these days, which means price action has far to go up. ARID says Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Mo Power says, beautiful Minnesota. And Doge Pound Gang, I just got coffee. Anyone else drinking something? Just sipping a little tea, a little cough cough, a little, uh, a little bubbly. It's five o'clock somewhere in the middle of the ocean, but soon it'll be five o'clock here. <laughs> Third view giving us some rockets and gorillas in the chat. Hey, give us either gorillas or rockets. Let's see which one of these wins. If you think, uh, if you've already voted and you have a strong opinion about it, give me some uh, rockets in the chat. If you haven't yet voted, but you want to throw some gorillas in the chat, give me those gorillas. Ryan Bienvenue says, hopefully this runs like a scalded ape tomorrow. Like... <laughs> Uh, Earthling says, ate a, a bowl of cereal and a gummy and washed it down with a watermelon LaCroix. 
SBCE is mooning. Uh, Mr. The TAD45, welcome back, dude. It's good to see you. Yuli23, some OJ, saving the champagne for later. Joel saying Chardonnay. Uh, Slagathor says, Mr. Andrew, good to see you. After hours popping. Should be seeing it anytime soon. Back to seven dollars and twenty-one cents. Lovely. We we're trading about seven dollars and thirty cents the entire power hour. Now we're going to be paying attention to where can AMC go from? Yeah. Oh, that's funny. When dilution. If you guys heard about the injunction that happened earlier uh, yesterday, that was the cause of a lot of the price action upward. Let me pull up a screen. It might be a little bit easier to see. That'll do it. Okie doke. Wa bam wa boom. Oh. After hours, please. There we go. Thank you kindly. This doesn't have the fib sequence that I set up earlier. But it'll show after hours. Can I? Still working around, trying to see whether or not we can get the right information in front of us. Finding a little bit of support at $7. That is where the after hours uh, drop has stopped. Stopped, drop, and slop. Brandon O'Brien says, come for the stock, stay for the meatball. He's just back there chilling. Uh, let's see. Bam Somi Story says, Andrew, trigger the fire alarm, please. Yeah, I need to <laughs> talk about a fire alarm from quite a while ago <laughs> that was in the middle of an earnings call and uh, yeah, caused a bit of a, of a, of a pr pricing discussion. <laughs> Spy is puking. Do think about margin calls on shorts at AMC at after hours. Spy crushed at the closing two minute mark. Let's see. When does it start? 4.45? It'll start five on the dot, but you probably want to be here a little bit earlier. You're already in the right place. See where SPY went today. Oh, interesting. SPI crushed at the very last minute. Try to reach a high of about 400 bucks, rejected at the top. Overall, not a bad crush. AMC back to about uh, $7.20. Oh, shoot, you guys just got up to 300 likes. So the next milestone is going to be 400. We're going to meatball another treat at 400 likes. Slap that like button as you guys come in. Let's give that meatball a little bit of a, a little bit of a, a delectable treat. That one's for 300 likes. Thank you kindly. Hey, 
Hey, Matt Blair Comedy, what's going on? Oh. Richie09, 5 p.m. Good. I have time to get something to munch on. Cool. Matt Blair says, thanks, football. Plus three shares. Oregon High Roller says, cocaine bears kills at box office. Sequel announces, cocaine meatball. <gasps> what? <laughs> you had a movie deal this whole time? When were you going to announce it to me? When was Meatball going to tell me? Does this seem like a, the, the top 10 anime betrayals of all time? I just don't know. Goliath Geo. Gus, the shells don't know what we're here for volatility and any time squeezes not for the long-term fundamental holds. Ryan Bienvenue. Hey, we're going to have about earnings results coming out pretty soon. And then we'll be listening to the earnings call itself. Magic Jackson. <laughs> Y'all got funny names. You're looking at the market like uh, a delicious, tasty treat right now. AMC up about 1.5%, still trending about that $7.20. Matt Blair says, plus six football. Yeshua11 says, what does it mean if I don't get a, a confirmation of my vote within 24 hours like proxy votes said I would? Pretty sure that the injunction is going to stop whatever this vote really means today. But we'll find out. We were talking about where everybody was earlier today. We're saying, we see Andreas Johansson saying hello from Sweden. Say hello in, your, in, in whatever language is, would be the most natural. How do you say hello where you're from? Hmm? Slow Mojo says, are we still drinking? I mean, it's five o'clock somewhere. You hear that, Meatball? You see, that's why you have a dog as a co-host. So you can control his liquor. You hear that? You hear that? <laughs> oh. Less than 26 minutes before we hear some glorious classical music. The kind that Adam Aaron loves to listen to. Andreas says, Hal. Ha Hallo. Halle. God, I hope that's right. Uh, Aaron says, what injunction? Let's, let's see. Oh, I, j I already got rid of that injunction. Um... JPEG. We got Michael saying, ahoy. Joe Rear says, hey. Mo says, yo. Nico says, yow. <laughs> Matt Blair says, plus nine football. Oh, wait, plus 10, Noir. Hello says, what's up? Uh, let's see. Daniel Alonzo says, my dog is the co driver in my car. Nice. Darula says, this co-host is chill. He is very chill. He's just patiently waiting for his treat. Professor Meatball gets a treat at 400 likes, which we're getting really close to. Scooby, Scooby-Doo, <laughs> says quick scoop 3LS11. Uh... Paul says, uh, Halichator uh, Day. <laughs> God, I hope that's right, too. Matt Blair says, ask Andrew how long I've been here. Matt, you've been here very long. Very, very long. JRNYC says, Oi, Brazil. Sir Mods a lot. Ciao. Thomas says, get like from me. Now. Where are we? 
or about 25 minutes away from hearing the glorious tones of <laughs> uh, today we are talking about X stock. Back to trying to test $7, still haven't pushed underneath $7. Struggling that seven dollars and ten cents right now. That's called a struggle bus. Do 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 do. Andy Makino says Konichiwa. Thomas Pastor, we love puppies. LMAO. Crocodile says hello, brother. Daniel Alonzo, meatball is a uh, a golden corg. It's easy to see on my phone. So if you take a look. If you take a look, he's he's literally like Two Face, but the dog. You see his his eyeliner on one on one side of his face, one side of his ear is is all cute. He's just a cute little puppy. He's using his begging eyes because he really wants that treat right now. You know he thinks he deserves it. Meatball says, uh, setting up fake accounts to get, to get likes. Yeah, he's going to get, he's going to get them too. AMC test $7 again, once again, supported at $7 flat. Marco Salvador says, hello from Peru. Agent Argent Purr says, selling out premium to all the synthetic shorters is kind of nice. The problem with uh, converting any amount of shares from one to the other is dilution. That's the end all and be all of it. If I have this many orange markers and this many green markers, and originally the only reason I was able to issue these orange markers was because they're not green markers. Now, half a year later, I would like to turn these orange markers into green markers. Now there's going to be more green markers, especially for people who uh, still own green markers. <laughs> CNK popped big after their earnings. What are the chances of the AMC finally not being manipulated during earnings? Survey says... Uh, <laughs> yeah, it, uh, it's probably going to be old news, but there's always a chance that this is going to be the informative call where they don't gaff. Please do not gaff. <laughs> Let's see. Where else is everybody from? Daniel Alonso says that his dog was the co-driver to his friend. Oh, Vadim Donderfer says, Shalom, my friend. L'chaim. Daniel Alonso says, yeah, and I have an Australian shepherd. Those are smart dogs. Whoa. AMC just popped up to $7.37, $7.40 in after hours. That means it's up about three and a half percent, making up of the making up the six percent dip that it had during the market hours. Volume today was about hundred million, which means it's for an earnings call day at least just a little bit would tip in the direction of upward momentum. Ding ding ding! Magic Johnson says Magic Jackson says there it goes. We got Brandon from Florida, backyard boogie from Delaware. Uh, Hung Plunk says, uh, Aussie Shep, gang, gang. So that's 40 cents. This is likely a reaction to the earnings report coming out. Austin says, howdy from a Texan in Georgia. Hillbilly says, man, used to watch you all the time. Back in the beginning of 2021, man, we were so naive then. So many lessons to learn. So many hard knocks to, to knock. <laughs> Virginia Beach, Virginia. AMC volatile. AMC just pushed past $7.40, now dropping underneath that support that we were ironclad at $7, currently trending about $6.85. Meatball is going to head to the treat box himself to be able to beg for the treat even closer. He's going to get some water. He's like... Uh, the earnings report. Making me thirsty. 
AMC retest seven dollars, right back up seven dollars and thirty cents now. Volatility. My name is Magic Jackson. <laughs> AMC pushing real time, seven dollars. Uh, Kyle saying AMC missed earnings. Arid says we beat. I'm assuming we beat, but let me just let me just see. Excuse me, excuse me, Meatball. <laughs> These good people need to see their light. Okay, come on back. half the treat for 400 likes. He's got his other half in just a second. Watch as they all accidentally halt AMC after hours, says Daniel. Hours. Sorry, Zach. Pretty volatile. AMC has now traversed all the way down to 685 after hours and all the way up to 740. That is... Uh, 55 cent spread for just a few minutes. Feeling like AMC is in the washing machine on high. Kristen Rowan says, you got a fave anime, Andrew? Running out of things to watch on Netflix. Huh. Have you seen um, My Uncle from Another Dimension? <laughs> Another World, whatever it's called. That one's kind of weird and funny. What else is really good? What else is good on Netflix right now? I, I heard the Vinland Saga is good, but that's on Prime. Let's see. Arjun Purse is worse than Q4 2021. Not really great. Well, obviously. Uh, let's see. Expected earnings was point uh, was minus 0.21. Actual was minus 0.14. Yeah, that seems like a beat to me. <laughs> Time for takeoff says we have a ghost. Earnings of a minus 14 cents per share. AMC pushes once again above the MA. Our moving average is getting a workout. Let's get a VWAP. That's right, a VWAP is useless after hours. There we go. Aha! AMC just needed a couple indicators. It was just a little bit shy. AMC rips once again to $7.32. Might stay a little bit of time here. Rejected originally at the 200 EMA. Now we're going to be able to find a little bit of our upward swing here. Most people have now realized that this is an earnings beat. $7.40, which means they're up 4% and change. $7.47, $7.50, $7.52, $7.54. after an open of $7.78 means that AMC has, made, has gapped up almost nearly all of its losses today. In just a few minutes time. It's pushing. It's working.
Shares available to borrow are going down as of close. And with just teens, just teens of minutes to go, dozens of minutes left before the earnings call begins. Danny Sweet dropping rockets in the chat. Everyone else drop some rockets for us in the chat. If you would be so kind, that would just be lovely. Just incredible. Hey, you guys got up to 400 likes. So next like, uh, next treat is going to be at 450. Remember, I can't say anything during the earnings call because we wanted this to be a completely unadulterated, unfiltered earnings call for the masses. Here's that treat for Meatball for 400. Another treat and 50 likes. Marco Salvador is saying pushing. Billion Dollar Baby is saying run. Tom Wesley say chills. Limit says, I need to hear this. There it is. There it is. Boom, boom, candle. <laughs> Agent Arjun Purr says, E reduced the aggregate principal balance of our debt by approximately 390 million since the beginning of 2022. That's good. Those are good newses. Andreas Johansson giving us some rockets. Stefan Dado, as well as H Town Fishmain giving us rockets. Caster Troy giving us rockets and astronauts. William Caldwell giving us some rockets. Christian Sigurd. Sigurd. Uh, Richie 09. And Empress Walters saying, let's go. CT says, so many possibilities with the selling of popcorn. Discounted ticket code. Movie themes. Richard Klein says, only 4.7 bill to go. Progress is progress. Looks like we caught ourselves on the EMA. Where's our RSI? RSI is, is a little bit nutso right now. Ooh, gross. I thought my phone cracked, but it's really just an old contact. And I told the, I told the personality quiz that I was not slovenly. I'm not slovenly, mom. Guarantee. When is the reverse stock split? Uh, ideally never, but we'll see after, the, after whether or not this vote can actually beat the injunction that was passed yesterday. Diamonds, a super agent. Jacked, blacky, saying, what flag is this? I'm gonna Google this flag. Guyana. Guyana flag ape rocket rocket. Hey Joshua, thanks for this thanks for the soup. <laughs> Joshua says bought a hundred plus twelve dollar calls because I believe it is worth much more. This battle is worth it. Hedge funds will see the positives outweigh the negatives with this stock soon. Be patient, brother apes. Josh, thanks for that soup. And Meatball prefers it as well. A little treat for Meatball. Courtesy of Joshua Lee. Christopher Yaxley saying, I think that there should be a gold ticket in the popcorn, like Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. It, except it's Adam and the AMC Factory. <laughs> wow, less than 11 minutes before this loading screen turns into a different loading screen. I cannot wait. Uh, Joseph Marsh says, how you been? Hey, I've been okay. I've been, I've been living, livid. Living and livid. That's the two parts of being uh, a traitor. <laughs> is, uh, is being alive and being angry. Hmm. Do you think it will surpass $8 end of week? Well, that's where we're looking at in the options chain right here. $8 would add another 38,000 calls in the money. Roughly coming up, putting up to 90,000 calls, which is about roughly 80% uh, more, maybe double. Steve S. Works says, hi, Mo. What's up? Adam and the bag holder factory. Thank you. Adam and the popcorn factory. AMC cashes itself once again on the 200 EMA. 
If we can find a little support here, we will be sur trying to surpass $7.55. Unfortunately, our RSI is very, very overbought. Every time we cross about this to 60-ish, even the low 60s in RSI, we cannot push any further. Need a buying catalyst. There's a lot of options on the, the, f the line. And it's, hello? It's Tendy Town. <laughs> Jason Everett, putting some rockets in the chat. Adam Rosansky, Moldrinsky, putting some rockets in the chat. And Thomas. Milo Bowl says their plus their little deal with Walmart for popcorn is confirmed. A little icing. David Ramonas says, just subscribed. Hey, thanks. If you guys did find some value out of this stream, you want to see some more? You want to you wanna join the Moon Platoon? That's what that looks like. It looks like that. So if you guys wouldn't want to be part of this end screen and be part of the faces here, um, press that join button next to the subscribe button or press that Patreon button down in the description, all of which is up to you. Currently about $7.35 AMC still playing big games. Big games only today. Ah. We are pushing. Currently at seven dollars and thirty-four cents. If we keep on the positive side of this two hundred EMA, we're looking pretty much like uh, a beautiful, a beautiful bounce above the seven dollar thirty range is set. Jason Everett throwing those uh, rockets in the chat. Den Dennis De Jesus. Magic Jackson, as well as Don't Be So Salty, Danny Sweet, we got Angela Alston. Kareem 100, I believe that, uh, that we actually beat earnings. I believe that earnings were expected to be about minus 21 cents per share, except that we got minus 18 cents. And that's good. <laughs> Billion dollar baby say, I like the stock. Hey, if you like the stock, you like the stock. Seven minutes left until we hear some beautiful hold music. At closing today, about 600,000 shares available, 194% borrow fee, currently 189% borrow fee, about 500,000 shares available. They're dropping. GWAP saying, mo money, let's go. Renhall is wondering how we know that we already beat Seems like the earnings report itself is already out. Uh, let's see. Ah, uh, here we go. Lovely. It's been posted to the investors relations site. Let me just pick it, pick, pick at it. I'm gonna pick at it. Uh, fourth quarter results, total revenues are about uh, 3,900 million compared to 2,500 million for 2021. Net loss decreased to 973 million, ex including a non cash impairment charge related to long lived assets of 133 million compared to a net loss of 1200 million for 2021, which included a non cash impairment charge related to long lived assets of 77 million. Just a net loss was about 700 million compared to an adjusted net loss of 1100 million for 2021. Net loss per diluted share was $0.93 cents compared to a net loss of diluted shares of $1.33 for 2021. Adjusted net loss per diluted share was $0.69 cents compared to an adjusted net loss per diluted share of $1.25. 
adjusted EBITDA was 46.46 million compared to a loss of 291.7 million for 2021. That is a full year summary. Fourth quarter summary, total revenues were 990 million compared to uh, 1100 million for the fourth quarter of 2021. Let me just see what you guys are saying while I'm reading this out. Deontay Helm says, Andrew, remember when you and you, me and Meatball went to the moon? Good times. <laughs> yeah, we had good times. Uh, AMC pushed below both the 200 EMA as well as the 15 MA, but still looking like we can find some support before we hit $7 again. Joshua Aurayanaya Gam. Oh my goodness. Do you think we can hit $8 this week? It is very likely. In fact, we hit it earlier today. <laughs> we had a high of $8.53. Currently trending about $7.13, although we got all the way up to $7.55 in after hours alone. Okay, fourth quarter summary. Total revenue is about $990 million compared to $1,100 million for the fourth quarter of 2021. Net loss increased to $287 million, including a non-cash impairment charge related to long-lived assets of $133 million compared to a net loss of $134 million for the fourth quarter of 2021. So that's pretty, it's pretty similar. Which included a non-cash impairment charge related to long-lived assets of $77 million. Looks like we found some support. Uh, adjusted net loss was 152 million uh, compared to an adjusted net loss of 57 million for the fourth quarter of 2021. Net loss per diluted share was 26 cents compared to a net loss per diluted share of 13 cents. Adjusted net loss per diluted share was 14 cents compared to an adjusted net loss uh, per diluted share of 6 cents for the fourth quarter of 2021. Adjusted EBITDA was 14 and a half million compared to 159 uh, per fourth quarter of 2021. Net cash used in operating activities for the quarter was 33.3 million. Operating cash burn generated for the quarter was 57.5 million. The available liquidity at December 31st, 2022 was $842.7 million, according, uh, including $211 million of undrawn capacity under the company's revolving credit facility. Long way to say that they do have cash left in the bank and they are making leeway in slowly reducing their debt load. They're working on it. What is this emoji? Shorts are facing repos on those Lambos, son, says Richie Nine. Brad Gaffney says, if the stock market was legit, we'd be flying right now. For every share we buy, they sell short. We can just create. They can just create shares at any pace. They want to control the pricing. The focus on retail stocks. That's the part of the story that is the hardest to tell. And we are now down to less than two minutes before a beautiful a beautiful story will then unfold. First part of the story is that you guys slap that like button when you guys come on in. If you guys already have, you know that Meatball has been getting treats at uh, every 50 likes. Meatball just got another treat because he hit 450. He'll get a double treat at 500 likes, and that means if you guys just slap that like button right now, he'll be getting treats for days. That's for 450, there you go. We just talked about the earnings report that had already come out. Uh, it seems most of the the beat that was supposed to happen has already happened. So now we just have to talk about what will the earnings call actually cover? Are we going to cover the vote? Are we going to cover the lawsuit? Are we going to cover the injunction? C. Goozer says, uh, buddy, eyeing them treats. Fred Leisure says, what time is earnings call? In about 30 seconds. Hey, in the earnings call, I will not be saying anything. I'll be giving my uh, my opinions and some, some entertaining thoughts at the end of this. Uh, but because of just the nature of get, making sure that everyone can hear this call, I will be not making any comments during the actual call itself. Uh, Tom Wesley says, thank you for offering a transparent and positive viewing experience. No overhyping, no FUD, just honest content. God, I love it when you guys put such great comments in the chat. Hold on, can I catch you? Caught you. Uh -huh. Hey, there, there's, that, there's that classical music. 
classical music. I love it. All right, I'm going to turn off the classical music. <laughs> That's great. Coffee house. Shorts will never quit, says JB. Nuance says, uh, AMC good earnings and still no reaction? That's AMC for you. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> no quick, no, no quip. Just truth. So if you guys had uh, a good day today, let me hear it out in the chat. What have you guys been doing with your day? What have you guys been hanging out? Do, uh, you guys had a decent workout? You guys had a, a decent chance to see the family and friends? What have you been up to? While well, AMC gaps back up to the, the 15 MA, right here at $7.23. Eight, we're gapping up. AMC has one big boom boom rockets. Can I just get a rocket in the chat? Can I just get some boom boom? boom. <laughs> AMC is reaching back up into that seven dollars and twenty four cents. Matthias uh, Axelson, hey, this is this earnings I'm actually pretty positive about. Generally, AMC has, has performed um, within the means of where it promised and then some. Mark Baptiste, Professor Fooly Fool's back. Been a while with, oh, been away with a new job. Hope all is well, brother. Good to see you, Mark. Those Fooly Fools every day. <laughs> oh, I just got a big jolt of nostalgia. We got some boom booms from Vex Z Z, Ape Sing Businessman, Magic Jackson, Deontay Helm. We got Ungroovy Gaming. Fernando Munez has been walking that, watching that ticker all day. Danny Sweet Rich Soda, BF. I'm my hero. We got Thomas Pastor, Pilcher Malice throwing us some uh, some ape emojis. Alberto, <laughs> SEC, come arrest me. Uh, Joshua says, Andrew, your thoughts on Troca Media? I think someone else just talked about that. Uh, we did some of that earlier this video. Uh, let's see. Coffee House, I believe we didn't miss. I believe we had worse results than 2021's Q4. But overall, I think the expectations were worse than what actually happened, which means we beat. Thomas Pastor throwing those rockets. Adam Rosansky Modrinsky. Rachel K saying 15% up is what I guess. We got Steven Longstreth throwing those emojis in the chat. MDT, as well as Boondocks M. We got K Love Stonks. HKD run with AMC. Andrew, people have been asking about HKD. Let me see. I'm going to pull up Lux Algo. If you guys wanted a trading companion, this isn't supposed to uh, this isn't supposed to replace good old fashioned uh, momentum and, and technical trading skills. But if you guys want the buy and sell signals, Lux Algo still turn that twenty percent off gives you buy and sells. Let's just do it for HKD real quick. Oops, this is a tool or function. I need to find a stonk. This is tool or function. It needs to be over here. HKD. Five minute chart right here. Oh, similar prices. Not really moving. Maybe back, maybe in the after hours. A little bit in the after hours. Just a smidge, but yeah, it actually does feel, feel like there's some sympathetic vibes happening. Jen Stevens saying, hey Andrew, it's been a minute. Good to see you. Good to see you as well. Happy to see you guys come back. Jason Everett says, too many treats will give him the farts. People, you hear that? <laughs> he opens his eyes. He's like, uh. Hope you guys are excited. I think we're, we're just minutes away from getting this started. It's the, the classical music. 
Bjorn Arid Balken. Balken. Uh, AMC earnings are heading the right way, but they still got a lot of debt going from 5,400 to 5,100. Fernando Munez, Diamond Hands. Ape says, what do you think about uh, liquidity drying up for hedgies, which can cause covering? That is the, the definition of the margin call squeeze. We defined it a couple of months ago. Maybe at this point it's a year and a month, a couple of months ago. Um, and that is the idea that liquidity dries up all, all over the market, which tumbles uh, margin call after margin call, causing more buy-in action and causing more forced catalysts. Shapuku. Dang, it's been a while, man. Good to see you. What's up? How you been? Ape thinks says, most companies have debt. You seen this meatball? You seen this picture of meatball? Oh, I love him so. Are earnings good or bad? They're good. Supposedly. <laughs> they would be good for a normal stock. Oh, normal stocks. Ja Rule, what's going on? <laughs> Where's Ja? I've been asking nonstop. Uh... Are they going to be broadcasted? Yeah, we're already in the call. It sounds like this. Classical music. It'll sound like classical music. I will turn off my own music during the, uh, the, the call itself. Grieven, missed the call. Did, you did not miss the call. The call is, is, is in about eight minutes. <laughs> Jen Stevens says, sweet boy. Ugh. Ja Rule says, we need Mo Andrew. <laughs> we need more Andrew lives. It's good to be here. It's just, it's just a good feeling to have all of y'all in the same room talking about the stonks again, talking about what you guys been up to. If, uh, if you guys are curious, I'm still working hard on the, uh, whew, still working hard on the, the journey to make the musical hit more theaters. Uh, the journey to continue making content that you guys like. Uh, I just went to Rim City itself, Southeast Asia. So if you guys, I know a couple of you are from there. Uh, so I'm curious if you guys be interested in like seeing uh, like travel tips, content about where I've been, where I plan to go. If you guys are interested in that, more like lifestyle stuff, I'll be putting it on. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe I'll have put one up and see what you guys think. If you guys promise to come back and comment, I'll be putting up more of those. Slow Mo just, we can't even hear your music. Oh, good. Well then, perfect. Split, stiff Spliff, the only data scientist I trust, myself. <laughs> Ungroovy Gaming says, high score. W what does that mean? I is it bad? Did I break it? Granddaddy Funk says, been a while, hope you're doing well. I'm on break from teaching piano lessons. What's up, Granddaddy Funk? Good to see you. Throw me some chats and for some good old, uh, throw me some emojis in the chat. Gorillas, we got crayons, we got rockets. For the people in our lives. We want to respect, we want to honor them, we want to see more of them. Never enough, never enough of the people that you care about in your day to day. Make sure that you guys spend a little bit of time telling someone that you love that you love them today. Uh, Richie says, yo, Ja, you trading stocks? <laughs> ja! Uh, let's see. Hazy says, lower liquidity wouldn't cause margin calls. Big players such as banks prop up the market using o zero DTE SPXE mini contracts while selling their equities at the top. Rinse repeat for weeks. We have covered this as well. Matthias says, when does the live start? It starts in about five minutes, I think. Ba da da, da da da. Jaime Melton saying, what's that pup doing there? What are you doing? He's collecting treats. When you guys jump in and you slap that like button, you give him the opportunity to eat one more treat. He likes sitting on the bed because he gets treats. That's 500 likes. Here's a double treat for him. There you go. Same rule goes during the, the stream. If you guys want to continue telling the people that come in, I can't because I can't talk during the, during the actual uh, webcast. Slap that like. I'll be giving Meatball some more treats anyway. Stephen Way says, Ja Rule, what up, homeboy? Been a minute. Colt. Throwing those ducks in the chat. 
Susumo saying, haven't, uh, haven't seen you in a while. Thank you for the stream. What's up? I'm my hero. Says, I tell my dog I love him every day. I think the girlfriend's a little jelly. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, you're in trouble. Richie saying, what's up, Sunny P240? Aw, y'all are catching up in the chat. This is so sweet. AMC catches a, a, a nasty tumble, but then finds a way to find support at $7.05 right now, currently climbing its way back up to the 15MA. $7.15 up there. Five minutes is business, man. Ja Rule says, meatball as chill as always. Ja Rule, what have you been up to? In one sentence. XI, XIG user says, can you make him speak? Meatball, what can you say? Arf. Sorry, my accent is terrible. Uh, Jason Cropper says, can you check Lux for LHDX? Yeah, Lux Algo. If you guys need just like a gut check, because you're so sure about something, but you're just not... 100% sure. Lux slaps on to a free copy of TradingView. I don't pay for TradingView. It's just a really good tool. Had that strong buy signal about $4.47. Uh, went, went to the fourth overbought at $1.19. I would look at it at a further time frame. Oh, God. Jason says, smash that like button, feed that pup. That's right. Ja Rule says, not too much, brother. Glad to see you're doing well. Hey, I'm living. I'm fully being alive right now. That's my special skill, Cap. I'm always alive. <laughs> Earnings in four minutes, right? Sunil says, you're, you're back. Glad to see you're streaming. Meatballs look so grown up. Meatball. Yeah, he's all grown up now. So looking, still listening to um, classical music. That's how you know that the stream hasn't started yet. I'm gonna see if I can zoom in on Meatball. This is not quite as easy with the new camera. Actually, I think it's impossible. I think the zoom comes from the lens. You're just gonna have to keep looking at me. The vote. The. Q4 earnings. If you guys haven't heard the numbers yet, we are looking at Adjusted net loss per diluted share of 14 cents compared to an adjusted net loss per diluted share of 6 cents in the fourth quarter of 2021. Adjusted EBITDA was about 14.5 mil compared to 159 mil for the fourth quarter of 2021. Net cash uh, used in operating activities for the quarter was 33.3 million. Operating cash burn generated for the quarter was 57.5 million. Available liquidity at December 31st, 2022 was 842.7 million, including 211 million of undrawn capacity under the company's revolving credit facility. So those are the numbers. Uh, my name is Andrew. I'm a data scientist here in Silicon Valley. That's Professor Meatball, if you guys are here, because you want to hear the earnings call. I'm not going to be saying anything during it, and it's about to start in about a minute. So if you guys wouldn't mind, slap that like as you guys come in so that more people can see this video and so that Meatball can get more treats per 100 likes. I'll still be feeding him during this call, but I won't be making any noise so that everyone can hear what's going on. I'm also going to be canceling my own music starting now so that we can listen to uh, the classical music currently in progress. <laughs> uh, we're also paying attention to the number of, short, of shares that are actually available. Yesterday we hit zero. Uh, we've, in the last m two months, seen AMC go up 50%, which means that there's a lot less liquidity for shorts to be able to play with since 2022. But 700% cost of borrow also means that AMC is looking for one major buying catalyst to push it into the next stratosphere. Nicholas Steele saying AMC equals all must cover. 
David Ramona says, "This isn't the real Ja Rule. Ja, where is Ja?" If you're watching this uh, after the actual earnings call itself, hey, you're you're in for a treat. Likely, we haven't heard it yet, but we will now. And I'll be shutting up very momentarily. For those of you in the chat right now, hello, Ape Tastic, Ja Rule, Calamari, Josh, Bruno, Pulse Wave, Joey Z, Thomas Schultz. Keep the chat moving. Keep asking questions, interacting with each other. We're currently seeing AMC jump only once below seven dollars to six eighty-five, push all the way up to seven fifty-five earlier. That is a sev. That is a seventy cent spread for just the after hours, and we're that close. To actually. St- finishing the classical music and starting the actual AMC Entertainment Holdings fourth quarter earnings webcast. Music is still going. Hmm. Ghost B are jacked, says Mr. Williams. Oh, looks like we're starting. Welcome to the AMC Entertainment fourth quarter and year end 2022 earnings webcast. At this time, all participants are in a listen-only mode. A brief question and answer session will follow the formal presentation. If anyone should require operator assistance during a conference, please press star zero on your telephone keypad. As a reminder, this conference is being recorded. It is now my pleasure to introduce to your host, John Merriweather, Vice President, Capital Markets and Investor Relations. Thank you, John. You may begin. Thank you, Bikram. Uh, Good afternoon. I'd like to welcome everyone to AMC's fourth quarter and year-end 2022 earnings webcast. With me this afternoon is Adam Aaron, our chairman and CEO, and Sean Goodman, our chief financial officer. Before I turn the webcast over to Adam, let me remind everyone that some of the comments made by management during this webcast may contain forward-looking statements that are based on management's current expectations. Numerous risks, uncertainties, and other factors may cause actual results to differ materially from those that might be expressed today. Many of these risks and uncertainties are discussed in our most recent public filings, including our most recently filed 10-K and 10-Q. Several of the factors that will determine the company's future results are beyond the ability of the company to control or predict. In light of the uncertainties inherent in any forward-looking statements, listeners are cautioned against relying on these statements. The company undertakes no obligation to revise or update any forward-looking statements, whether as a result of new information or future events. On the webcast, we may reference non-GAAP financial measures, such as adjusted EBITDA, constant currency, free cash flow, operating cash burn, and operating cash generated, among others. For a full reconciliation of our non-GAAP measures to GAAP results, please see our earnings release posted in the Investor Relations section of our website earlier today. After our prepared remarks, there will be a question and answer session. This afternoon's webcast is being recorded and a replay will be available in the investor relations section of our website at amctheaters.com later today. With that, I'll turn the call over to Adam. Thank you, John. Good afternoon, one and all, and thank you for joining us today. Let me add a very special welcome to the thousands of our individual shareholders who have been making it a habit to tune into these quarterly earnings webcasts for AMC Entertainment. 2022 marked another year of significant strategic, operational, and financial gains for AMC Entertainment. With our two announcements today on Q4 2022 earnings and of the launch of AMC Perfectly Popcorn at more than 2,600 U.S. Walmart stores, Once again, AMC is demonstrating 
unmistakable progress along our multi-year pandemic recovery glide path. In my opinion, there are five reasons why AMC shareholders should be especially excited and smiling today. First, the increasing size of our industry as it recovers. Second, AMC's performance in Q4. Third, the fact that we are outperforming our competitors. Fourth, our agility in raising cash and reducing debt. And fifth, this morning's Walmart AMC perfectly popcorn announcement. First and overarching is the size of our industry itself, which is increasing. For five consecutive years prior to the pandemic, from 2015 to 2019, the domestic box office, which is all theaters, all brands across the United States and Canada, exceeded $11 billion. It was $11.4 billion in 2019. But then COVID came and brought our industry to its knees. And the 2020 domestic box office was only $2.2 billion, down, as we all know, a breathtaking 82% year over year from the pre-pandemic level in 2019. Since then, our industry has seen a steady growth trajectory. The 2021 domestic box office was $4.5 billion, more than double that of 2020. And 2022's full year domestic box office of $7.4 billion was about 65% higher than 2021. The numbers again, $11.4 billion in 2019, falling to $2.2 billion, rising to $4.5 billion, rising to $7.4 billion. Based on the box office results so far in the first quarter of 2023, which is already up 44% year over year, combined with a much larger number of broader and deeper movie titles to be released in the coming quarters, based on what we know today, the 2023 domestic box office will almost certainly be significantly higher in 2023 than that of 2022. You all know that we finished 2022 and started 2023 on a very strong note with what is already the third highest grossing film of all time, James Cameron's epic sequel, Avatar The Way of Water. It really is a testament to the genius of James Cameron that he is responsible for three of the four highest grossing movies in the history of cinema. I digress for a moment to say thank you, Jim Gabrin, and thank you to your producing partner, John Landau. It won't surprise you both to hear that you both are greatly appreciated by AMC and by the millions of AMC shareholders and the millions of AMC moviegoers. Please, please, Jim and John, keep making more movies. Speaking of more movies, that's one of the key stories of the coming year, 2023. The incredible Tom Cruise's Top Gun Maverick, which grossed more than $1.5 billion in movie theaters in 2022, and Avatar The Way of Water, which has already grossed almost $2.3 billion in movie theaters in only 11 weeks, among many other successful movie releases, they all prove that moviegoers no longer are afraid to go to a cinema to watch a movie as they once were afraid in the darkest days of 2020 at the height of the pandemic. Our problem now in generating attendance in theaters is quite different. Instead, it's simply that Hollywood has been releasing fewer movies of late. Depending upon how you count, the number of major movies released in 2022 was somewhere between a third and a half fewer than the total number of such major films released in 2019 before the pandemic. Fortunately, now, 
Finally, that is all changing. We currently estimate that 30 or more movies will gross more than $100 million domestically in 2023. That compares with only 18 doing so in the just completed 2022. That is an increase in 2023 of about 75% of the number of movie titles grossing $100 million or more. Let me repeat that. We are expecting in 2023 about a 75% increase in the number of major movie titles grossing $100 million or more uh, compared to last year. The second reason for our enthusiasm is that AMC posted much improved results for the fourth quarter of 2022. Naturally, we're pleased that AMC Entertainment easily bested consensus estimates for Q4 2022 revenue and for Q4 2022 adjusted EBITDA, as well as posting the beat on adjusted net income and EPS for 2022 Q4 after excluding for non-cash impairment write-offs. We are similarly encouraged that Q4 2022 revenue per, trade per patron of $19.98 was well above pre-pandemic levels thanks to rising ticket prices and the consumers' continued predilection to indulge more at our concession stands in our high-margin food and beverage business. AMC's full year 2022 results represented our strongest year since pre-pandemic 2019, with 2022 results improving over 2021, which in turn were better than those of 2020. Indeed, in full year 2022, AMC saw our annual revenue increase by more than 54% year over year, and our adjusted EBITDA improved in a single year by more than $338 million versus 2021. That's an enormous increase. The third reason we are smiling today is that as the world's largest theater chain, we are outrunning our competitors. Number two, Regal Cineworld is in bankruptcy court because they essentially ran out of cash in September. By contrast, AMC has been masterful in raising equity as needed, and we ended 2022 with over $840 million of cash in the bank or undrawn revolving credit lines. As for number three operator, Cinemark, we encourage you to look at the Q4 metrics where we overlap in the United States. Average ticket price, AMC, $12.22. Cinemark, only $10 even, $12.22. $10. Food and beverage per patron, AMC, $7.76. Cinemark, $7.43. Total revenues per patron, AMC, $21.85. Cinemark, $19.35. Film exhibition costs, and this is one where you want the number to be low, not high. AMC, our film exhibition costs were 51% of our admissions revenues. At Cinemark, it was 58%. Our fourth marker of progress at AMC has been our ability to strengthen our liquidity profile and balance sheet. Over the last 12 months, AMC has raised approximately $314 million in gross cash proceeds, and we've also reduced the aggregate principal balance of our debt by approximately $390 million since the beginning of 2022. And as for that fifth reason for smiles today, the exciting popcorn announcement this morning, we are launching with Walmart. What an enormous vote of confidence that's coming to AMC from the largest retailer in the United States in the quality and consumer appeal of our new microwave and ready to eat popcorn. I'll come back to that and other essential topics after I return. But right now, let's pass the call over to Sean Goodman, our CFO, to review our financial and operating results in more detail. Sean? Thanks, Adam. And thanks to everyone for joining us this afternoon. 
2022 was a year of growth and recovery for ANC. During the year, we welcomed 201 million guests to our theaters around the world. <coughs> That's a 56% increase compared to 2021, and it's 72 million more guests than in 2021. This attendance improvement, coupled with strong admissions and food and beverage revenue per guest, translated in a, into a $1.384 billion increase in consolidated revenue, representing a 54.7% increase compared to 2021. And likewise, 2022 adjusted EBITDA improved by more than $338 million to a positive $46.6 million. This compares to a loss of $291.7 million in 2021. Clearly, our recovery is continuing in earnest. <clears throat> now, looking specifically at the fourth quarter of 2022, compared to the same period last year, the North American box office declined by 14.5% to $1.8 billion. This was due to the relative strength of Spider-Man No Way Home in 2021 and the limited number of new titles available for release in October and November of 2022. Our fourth quarter consolidated revenue declined by $181 million, or 15.4%, to $991 million. However, on a constant currency basis, consolidated revenue declined by 12.4% as we outperformed the overall industry because of strong operating performance metrics. For the fourth quarter, on a constant currency basis, total consolidated revenue per patron was $20.69. This is approximately 5.4% higher than the fourth quarter of 2021. And this was driven by admissions revenue per patron growth of 5.1% and food and beverage revenue per patron growth of 7.8%. It is worth noting that consolidated constant currency revenue per patron in Q4 of 2022 was 30.8 percent higher than pre-pandemic in 2019, indicative of the tremendous growth in revenue per patron during our recovery period. Domestic revenue in Q4 declined by 10.7 percent, with admissions revenue per patron increasing by 6.2 percent, to $12.22, and food and beverage revenue per patron increasing by 7.7% to $7.76. In addition, other revenue per patron increased by 6.3%. In the international business, on a constant currency basis, revenue in Q4 declined by 16.6%, with admissions revenue per patron increasing by 2.2% to $10.70, and food and beverage revenue per patron increasing by 7.4% to $4.98. Other revenue per patron decreased by 8.8%, as theater rental revenue generated during 2021 was replaced by regular admissions and food and beverage revenue. We continue to generate strong growth in revenue per patron as our guests enjoy our innovative food and beverage offerings, including movie theater themed cocktails and collectible items. Our initiatives to optimize admissions revenue, including blockbuster pricing, are yielding positive results. And the increased adoption of our industry leading AMC app and our marketing initiatives are all helping to drive overall revenue per patron growth. And this growth is further supported by increased premium format, or PLF, penetration, with PLF attendance representing 25.5% of domestic attendance in Q4 2022, compared to 19.8% in Q4 of 2021. And in our international markets, premium format attendance represented 18% of attendance, compared to 10.7% in the fourth quarter of 2021. So clearly guests are increasingly appreciating the premium experience offered by our IMAX, Dolby and AMC Prime offerings. Looking forward, 
We will maintain our focus on the guest experience that supports the strength of our key performance metrics, including, one, ongoing enhancement of our loyalty programs and the functionality of the AMC app. Two, innovative food and beverage offerings. Three, investing in providing the best possible sight and sound experiences through advanced laser projection technology and premium offerings such as IMAX, Dolby, and AMC Prime. And four, growing revenue through diversification initiatives, such as retail popcorn, the AMC credit card, renting out our theaters during off-peak times, marketing, and promotional initiatives. All of the above to be achieved while paying very close attention to our overall operating efficiency. Let's talk about the balance sheet now. We ended the quarter with liquidity of $843 million, comprised of $632 million of cash and cash equivalents, and $211 million of undrawn credit facilities. During the fourth quarter, net cash used in operating activities was $33.3 million, and we achieved positive non-GAAP operating cash generated of $57.5 million. We define operating cash generated as cash from operating activities plus total capital expenditures before debt servicing costs and before deferred rent payback. During 2022, we were active in the capital markets as we took actions to strengthen our balance sheet. In total, in 2022, we raised $229 million of gross equity capital we refinanced $1.4 billion of debt. We extended certain debt maturities through to 2026 and beyond. And we repurchased $123.5 million of debt at an average discount of 43.7%. The net result is a $220 million reduction in the principal amount of interest-bearing debt outstanding during 2022. <clears throat> And during 22, we also strengthened our balance sheet by repaying approximately $158 million of deferred rent. And this reduced our deferred rent balance to $157.2 million at December 31, 2022. You may recall that back in March of 2021, this deferred rent balance was more than $470 million. So over the last 21 months, we have lowered our deferred rent liability by approximately $313 million. All told, if we include the decrease in deferred rent, we reduced our liabilities by a total of $378 million in 2022. And in addition to that, so far in the first quarter of 2023, we have raised another $84.7 million of gross equity proceeds. And we have reduced the principal balance of our debt outstanding by an additional $170.2 million through, through the exchange of debt into equity and capitalizing on opportunities to repurchase debt at a discount. These actions in the first quarter of 2023 so far take our total debt reduction to $548 million when we include the reduction in deferred rent liabilities. And our total equity capital so far raised to $314 million. Note that during 2023, we plan to further reduce the deferred <coughs> rent balance by another 75 to $100 million, and this will reduce the liability to approximately 60 to $80 million by the end of 2023. Regarding capital allocation, our priorities remain unchanged. One, we need to maintain sufficient liquidity to manage through the recovery phase of our business. Two, we just strengthen our balance sheet by extending debt maturities, reducing debt, and reducing associated interest costs. Three, invest in our business to continue to enhance the guest experience, and four, opportunistically pursue value-enhancing initiatives, including those that lead to diversification of our business and revenue streams. Having the flexibility to raise equity capital, a 
allows us to opportunistically take critical actions to strengthen our balance sheet and at the same time successfully navigate through the ongoing recovery of our industry. For these reasons, I would like to take this opportunity to urge shareholders to vote in favor of the proposals that, we, that will be voted on at the upcoming shareholder meeting on March 14th. These proposals are designed to protect the long-term value of AMC equity and provide us with the flexibility necessary <coughs> to ensure a successful recovery <coughs> from the ongoing impact of the COVID pandemic. Our capital expenditure net of landlord contributions was $69 million in the fourth quarter of 2022, and we finished the year with a total net capex spend of $182.1 million. <laughs> and similar to 2022, looking towards 2023, we expect our capital expenditure to be in the range of $150 to $200 million. Actively managing our theatre portfolio continues to be a priority as we add new high-performing locations and eliminate low performers, all with the goal of improving our guest satisfaction and enhancing our overall profitability. During the fourth quarter, we added five new theatres and we closed nine. This brings the total number of locations closed since the pandemic began to 115 and the total new locations open to 54 for a net reduction of 61 locations. The combined 54 new locations continue to substantially outperform the 115 closed locations prior to their closings. And they also <coughs> are outperforming our underwriting expectations. Looking forward, we're optimistic about the future and the opportunities to strengthen and diversify our business while continuing to enhance our financial position. So with that, I'll hand the call back over to Adam to review some exciting recent announcements and provide an update on our strategic initiatives, including our upcoming stockholder meeting. Adam. Thank you, Sean. As I said at the top of the call, at AMC we're all smiles today, but by no means are we out of the woods yet. We will need to remain smart and action-oriented to successfully chart our way through what are still COVID-impacted waters. But clearly, we have been and are now making great progress. And while we have much more work ahead of us still, my ongoing conversations with our studio partners, including some as recently as this weekend, buoys my optimism that more movies are indeed headed to theaters and that the value of theatrical exhibition is clearly recognized and internalized by the heads of every single major studio. As the leader of AMC, I am proud that we have resiliently weathered many a storm over the past 36 months. A storm first of the virus itself, then the threat to exclusive theatrical windows. More recently, the conviction held by some that streaming services would win out over theaters, and all through it was the concern that there would not be enough cash in the coffers for AMC to outlast all that we had to stare down. What's more, there was the added complexity for us of doing something well that few, if any, companies ever thought about before, how to adjust to a whole new cadre of millions of individual shareholders taking ownership of our company. Fortunately for us, the pro people who predicted that we could not weather the storms were all wrong. And more fortunately for us, those new retail investors turned out to be the saviors of our company. Their passion for AMC saved our company as they provided us with the cash resources we needed to survive. They also flooded us with some truly great ideas, including one of my personal favorites, that we should sell popcorn to the home market in what is, after all, a multi-billion dollar category. This morning's exciting news announcement that the retail launch of AMC's microwave and ready-to-eat perfectly popcorn is at hand and exclusively 
with the nation's largest retailer, Walmart. It keeps a promise to do so that I made 16 months ago to our shareholders and is yet another example of AMC's powerful commitment to innovation. Beginning on March 11, just ahead of the Oscars telecast on March 12, AMC's Ready to Eat Popcorn will be available exclusively at hundreds of Walmart locations on much sought after featured end cap displays. In the weeks that follow, AMC Perfectly Popcorn will hit the shelves again exclusively at more than 2,600 Walmart stores in the United States with three varieties of ready-to-eat popcorn in the following flavors. Classic butter, extra butter, and for those seeking a lower sodium solution, lightly salted. The ready-to-eat varieties are expected to be priced at $3.98 per bag plus tax, and they all offer the authentic taste of real AMC movie theater popcorn to be enjoyed anywhere. Then, our microwave AMC Perfectly Popcorns will become available at Walmart. Again, in the same three flavors, classic butter, extra butter, lightly salted, and they are expected to retail for $4.98 plus tax for a six count box. As an added and unique benefit, the extra butter microwave boxes will include six packets of additional buttery topping that eaters at home can use to slather all over their popcorn, truly replicating that ultimate AMC movie theater popcorn experience. This first of its kind approach by a theatrical exhibitor to distrib distribute ready to eat and microwave popcorn at retail outlets all across the country further differentiates AMC as the undisputed leader in this industry and greatly extends the visibility of the AMC brand. Another idea that came to us from our investors was to sell AMC and movie themed merchandise. We are doing so now across the United States and online. As every major movie releases, as every big tentpole releases, we have something themed for that film. And it's but one of many such examples of success here are, if you can believe it, Ant-Man popcorn helmets have been quite popular, selling almost $2 million worth in less than two weeks. This has proven to be such a successful concept that we're about to launch the same activity across our theaters in Europe. Thank you, retail shareholders, for the idea. Next on the innovation docket is the launch of our new co-branded AMC Entertainment Visa card coming soon to a wallet or a purse near you. It's been designed to drive increased AMC brand loyalty along with incremental attendance to our AMC theaters and should generate attractive financial returns with very little risk to boot. And finally, we re recently announced a potentially important development. We announced that we are testing sightline seating at AMC in some of our theaters in New York, Chicago, and Kansas City. New York and Chicago because they're big cities in the United States, Kansas City because we're headquartered here and we ourselves want to walk into our theaters and talk to our guests and gauge their reactions directly and firsthand. This is, the test is being done as a, for a potential nationwide rollout later in 2023. With sideline seating, as you know if you saw the release, we are charging a slight premium for the most popular seats in an auditorium but discounting the prices of less popular seats closer to the screen up front. This is in line with how other sellers price their seats for live theater, for concerts, for sporting events. It's also how we've been pricing movie theater tickets in Europe for many years. We do understand, however, that this is a substantial change to the status quo for U.S. moviegoers. So, we will be watching very closely how moviegoers react to the changes that are being tested uh, right now. Uh, we will report back to you in future calls what we're seeing in the tests, uh, and we look forward to this thing working well for the benefit both of our moviegoing public 
and for AMC. AMC's ability to continue to raise capital during our ongoing recovery makes all these potentially transformative innovations and new actions possible, and it is crucial to our future success. To that end, I'd like to utilize the remainder of my formal remarks today to discuss the upcoming March 14 special stockholders meeting and the importance of the proposals on which our shareholders are already voting. Last August, we issued 516,800,000 APE preferred equity units as a dividend to holders of our AMC common shares on a one-for-one -one basis. The primary goals of issuing the APE dividend was to provide AMC with a new currency that could be used to strengthen our balance sheet by generating cash, bolstering our liquidity, to reduce our debt, and to allow us to grow. And that is precisely what the eight units have done. Since September of 2022, the creation of eight units resulted in AMC successfully raising $314 million of gross cash proceeds and allowed us to reduce the principal balance of our debt by more than $221 million, most of which was profitably repurchased at a substantial discount. Indeed, AMC is unequivocally a stronger company today as a result of the creation of the APE dividend and it's allowing us to raise cash and reduce debt. I might add that that came amidst a lot of press speculation that would be unsuccessful in doing so. To the naysayers and doom tellers, you know what I say, choke on that. However, despite having the same economic and voting rights as our AMC common shares, eight preferred equity units have consistently traded at a mysterious and substantial discount to AMC common shares. This discount creates inefficiencies that increases our cost of capital and causes unnecessary and preventable dilution. So, after careful thought, the AMC Board of Directors is presenting important proposals for shareholders to vote on at the upcoming special meeting on March 15, 14, 2022. These proposals are designed to protect the long-term value of a shareholder's investment in AMC while still providing AMC with the flexibility necessary to continue along our recovery trajectory in a challenging environment. As you already know, the two key proposals are Two, one, increase the number of authorized AMC common shares from 524 million to 550 million and combine the AMC uh, common shares and eight preferred units. Second, to affect a reverse stock split of one share for every 10, which together with the increase in authorized common shares permits that automatic conversion of eight units into AMC common stock. Our board and I strongly believe that it's in the best interest now of AMC shareholders to convert eight units, to convert eight units into AMC common shares, thereby simplifying our capital structure and eliminating the gap between the prices of eight units and of AMC shares. As AMC's single largest individual shareholder, with millions of AMC shares and eight units, I have a vested interest in the outcome of this election because my net worth rises as AMC strengthens and my net worth falls as AMC gets weaker. I currently own outright some 3.7 million AMC shares or eight units and have a further economic interest in an additional 4.5 million eight units or AMC shares as a result of granted but unvested stock. In total, I have some 8.2 million AMC shares or AMC units. You know what that means? It means that my interests are directly aligned with those of our shareholders. 
I am not some hedge fund plant or Trojan horse, as a few of the more bizarre conspiracy theories go. I'm on the side of the retail investor because I am myself a retail investor. And I'd like to share with you the seven reasons why I have voted yes, voting for the proposals that are being recommended by the board. Before I do so, however, I should point out that litigation has been brought in the Delaware Court of Chancery attempting, attempting to block our shareholder proposals and your right to vote on them. We believe such litigation is without merit, that our actions have been totally lawful and consistent with our charter, and we will vigorously defend our position in this matter. The court has ordered that the March 14 vote shall take place on schedule, but that any implementation action resulting from the vote be held in abeyance until the court rules on the substance of the claims being made. So the vote is on and it is on now. I urge our shareholders to vote now so that your voice can be heard. And because I think it's the right thing for me to do and for you to do, I urge you to vote for the proposals with me. Here's why. First, a more resilient AMC. Having the flexibility to efficiently and opportunistically tap both the equity and debt capital markets results in a more resilient company. Were it not for our ability to have raised both equity and debt over the past three years, AMC would not have survived the pandemic that caused a material decline in our business activity. Second, reduce capital raising inefficiencies associated with eight units trading at a discount to AMC shares. Converting eight units to AMC shares will result in a single price for all AMC equity. This single price eliminates the inefficiency inherent in the discount between eight units and AMC common stock and will allow AMC to more efficiently raise equity capital at the most attractive terms in the future. Third, enhance the ability to raise cash and increase liquidity. Well, I believe AMC is currently in a strong liquidity position with more than $840 million of available liquidity at the end of December 22. The ability to efficiently raise additional liquidity when needed has proven to be critical for this company in the past. And depending upon the path and timing of recovery, may be critical to our survival again in the future. Fourth, strengthen AMC's balance sheet. AMC's balance sheet is expected to strengthen over time as the box office grows. At the same time, as we have demonstrated in recent months, there continue to be attractive opportunities for us to use available equity or equity proceeds to buy back debt or exchange debt for equity at a discount to face value, which greatly benefits shareholders. Fifth, simplify ownership in AMC. Consolidating ownership of AMC into one single class for all shareholders eliminates the added complexity that some brokerages have imposed on their clients in the holding or trading of our preferred equity securities. In addition, the single class of equity eliminates the potential for hedge funds or other investors to engage in arbitrage trading strategies between the APE and AMC securities. Sixth, position AMC to transform into a stronger, more diversified company. A single equity class will better allow us to pursue attractive shareholder value creation opportunities to diversify and to transform our business. And last, seventh, create long-term value for AMC. A vote for the resolutions is a vote in favor of the long-term value of AMC. Since we announced our intention to hold a shareholder vote to convert eight units into AMC shares, the total equity value of our company has increased. The other matter of consequence being discussed at the March 14 shareholder meeting 
is the one for 10 reverse stock split. So let me quickly address that topic. If you have 10 $1 bills in your pocket and you exchange them for one $10 bill, you still have $10 either way. If you would have 10 $10 bills in your pocket and you exchange them for one $100 bill, you'd still have $100 either way. This reverse split in and of itself should be neutral. However, for a variety of reasons, including the technical listing rules of stock exchanges, we think it's unwise for our shares to be trading at levels in the single digits. The reverse split also creates room to allow for the full conversion of apes into common stock, which we also think is a good idea for each of you, as I previously explained, and creates the capacity for common stock to be issued uh, as equity in the future. In my view, I believe that there's no compelling argument why our shareholders should generally be averse to a reverse stock split. As I stated earlier, having the flexibility to continue to raise capital as we navigate through our recovery is crucial to AMC's future success and has thus far kept us from the fate of several of our competitors who have been forced to seek bankruptcy protection. Were we to be somehow deprived of this cash-raising capability, our future may not nearly be so bright as it appears currently. Indeed, our future could turn quite bleak in just a blink of an eye. I cannot emphasize enough that while things are looking up now, our success could literally vaporize in an instant if we misstep. The reason we have succeeded to date is that in our opinion, we have threaded the needle perfectly heretofore during this pandemic. But make no mistake, the need to continue to thread the needle perfectly going forward is unchanged at AMC Entertainment. Fortunately, we're pretty good at this. And we've been at it a while, and we know what we're doing. I know I have about three or four million friends out there who like to give me advice. But I'd like to remind you we've done a pretty good job of stewarding this company during tough times. Avoiding a dire fate is a commitment that I personally made to our shareholders in the earliest days of this global pandemic, when our revenues went to zero overnight and stayed there for months. I remain steadfast in that commitment to you today. Every action that AMC has taken is in direct support of that commitment Despite what the naysayers or the short sellers or those who wish us harm would have you believe, our mission now is clear. And it's the same exact cause that so many of our shareholders joined and embraced way back in the dark days of 2020 and early 2021. You all remember the hashtag, Save AMC. That's the report for Q4 2022. Sean. Let's now move to questions, both from our industry analysts and from our shareholders. Great. Thanks, Adam. Let's uh, start with some questions um, from our shareholders. There are a number of questions coming through about the upcoming shareholder vote that we just spoke about. Um, here's a good example. What are the implications if the vote passes? And what are the implications if the vote does not pass? So if the vote passes, it's my expectation that this ridiculous gap between the price of an ape and the price of an AMC share will go away. When I say it's a ridiculous gap, folks have the same thing. They have the same economic rights. They have the same voting rights. Why should an ape be trading at a third the price of a common share, or a seventh of the price of a common share as it was just two months ago. Um, uh, if, it pass, if the vote passes, I think what you'll find is that this discounting of the ape goes away. What that means is that we'll be able to raise capital 
on, in my opinion, more attractive terms. Uh, uh, if the uh, similarly what will happen if the vote passes is there'll be a you know one to ten reverse stock split. So you'll stop seeing the share price of AMC floating around you know three or four or five dollars a share. Um, the simple math is it should multiply by ten. Where it goes from there, up or down, that's a function of market dynamics. But it is simple math. You'll be trading one share, you'll be trading ten shares for one, which mathematically should be priced ten times higher. If it if the votes that that we're voting on at this shareholder meeting do not pass, uh, it's true that the reverse split won't happen. Uh, but what is true is that the status quo doesn't change, which means that there still will be apes and there still will be AMC shares. The apes will continue to trade at a discount, I would guess. <clears throat> no one has a perfect crystal ball, but um, that's been the experience since, since August. And since our ability to raise capital is tied only to the price of the ape, if the ape continues to exist, it would seem that we would be, we, we wouldn't be blocked from raising capital, but we'd be raising capital on much less attractive terms. Um, it would cause more dilution in the stock that is entirely 100% preventable if uh, a majority of our shareholders vote yes. So here's another question related uh, to this. It's related to the reverse uh, stock split. And basically it says, why do we need to do a reverse stock split? Can't we just convert eight units into AMC without doing this reverse stock split? We could, um, but as I said in my early remarks, uh, the share price would hover in the single digits. And um, there are certain technical listing rules on stock exchanges. We don't think it's a good idea for our stock to be trading in single digits. And since we're going to have a shareholder vote anyway, it seems logical to us to resolve both uh, questions at the same time. It's expensive to call these special meetings of shareholders. It costs millions of dollars to do so. We'd rather get them both done now than have to deal with a uh, reverse stock split at some point in the future. We have a number of shareholders asking about their proxy materials. Uh, one example here is, I have not yet received my proxy materials from my broker. What do I need to do to be able to vote, to get my proxy materials and be able to vote? As Bill Clinton famously said in the 1990s, for those of you who are old enough to remember the 1990s, I feel your pain. My AMC shares and AP units are at four brokerage firms, and I've received the voting materials from three of the four firms but not the fourth. So if you have not heard from your broker, you should do what I'm about to do. Call them. Explain to them that there is a March 14 shareholder vote, that you own shares or units, and that you'd like to cast your vote, and they should get you a proxy. Uh, if your broker is not acting in response to your question quickly enough, email or call our proxy solicitor, D.F. King, you can reach them at an email address, amc at dfking.com, amc at dfking.com. Their phone number is 800-859-8511. All the information I just gave is for our U.S. shareholders, probably our Canadian shareholders, and international shareholders in many countries. But we are all aware, painfully, that the brokerage firms in some countries, especially in Europe, do not facilitate shareholder voting. Uh, and there, if, that, if, if you're with one of those firms, there's not much you can do other than put your, firm, your shares in a different broker who would allow you to vote at future shareholder meetings. And there's a question here about the lawsuit that you mentioned in your prepared remarks. It says, it has been reported that AMC is defending against two lawsuits relating to the issuance of APE units. Is this true, and can you elaborate? Yes, litigation's been filed. We think it's misguided. Uh, we believe that all the actions we've taken are lawful. We think we have the merits in this case. It's consistent with our charter. We will defend our position 
vigorously, and we are encouraged that the Delaware Court of Chancery has allowed this March 14 vote to proceed on schedule. Um, there's some questions here about our loyalty programs, um, and I'll, I'll just read a few of them uh, to you. Uh, does AMC have any plans to revise loyalty programs and A-list memberships, for example? What about family memberships, partnerships with streaming companies, maybe a lower price for memberships with restrictions to limit frequency of attendance, etc.? So those are all good questions and good ideas. Um, uh, we have been and are studying them all. The two of the most important marketing programs we have our AMC Stubbs, and especially AMC Stubbs A-List. About half of our total clientele in the United States participates in Stubbs. And about 15% of our total activity in the United States comes from A-List members. Um, these are very important programs. We're constantly reviewing them for possible changes and improvements. Uh, there's nothing immediately on the horizon that would change either program other than uh, AMC Visa Entertainment card that's going to be added, an AMC Entertainment Visa card, yeah, I said it right. AMC Entertainment Visa card that will be coming as part of the Stubbs program that will allow Stubbs members uh, to, even, to earn even more Stubbs points, both when they spend at our theaters and when they spend away from our theaters. Uh, but keep the good ideas flowing. Uh, we, we continue to think hard about what's the best way uh, for AMC to uh, approach the moving going public. Question about our theater footprint. Does AMC plan on opening new theaters in areas such as perhaps South Carolina or other states where AMC uh, has a limited presence? Uh, I can't make a specific comment about South Carolina, but uh, at least South Carolina is one of our theaters. Uh, we have none in Hawaii, we have none in Alaska. We have none in Mississippi. I don't think we're in Vermont. Uh, but we do have the largest national footprint of any, any operator. I think we're in 43 or 44 states on the District of Columbia. We have a sizable market share in the largest cities all across the country. Plus, we have a big platform of theaters, even in smaller rural markets. Um, we're always looking to add theaters. and. You, you said earlier in the call, Sean, that we closed over 100 theaters that were not performing during the pandemic, but we opened up 54 new ones. And the 54 new ones were producing to the bottom line far more than the 100 that we closed. I think 10 of the 54 probably produced far more EBITDA than the 100 that we closed. Um, so we're always looking to grow. We can grow by adding new build theaters from the ground up, or there's also the opportunity for us to inexpensively add into our system theaters that may have been opened by other operators who have faltered uh, during the pandemic. Uh, uh, several firms declared for bankruptcy uh, in, over the last three years and shed a lot of theaters. And we picked up a bunch, as you know. We picked up about a third of the Arclight circuit uh, which was headquartered in Los Angeles. We picked up more than half of the Bowtie circuit that was headquartered in Connecticut. Uh, our eyes continue to be wide open. I do believe that there will be a continued opportunity for AMC to uh, add theater locations quite inexpensively. And I might add to do so sometimes it requires money, which is why it was so very helpful to us that we have raised over $300 million of cash from August through uh, uh, January. Uh, uh, the more cash in the bank, the, the easier it is to make the decision to add theaters and grow. There is a huge amount of interest in the retail launch of AMC Perfectly Popcorn. Um, let me read to you just a few of the questions. Uh, can you talk more about the opportunity for AMC in retail popcorn? When will AMC popcorn be available in the U.S. nationwide? Will AMC popcorn be available to purchase online through the AMC website? Will AMC popcorn be available to purchase in Canada and maybe in Europe? 
Uh, that's a lot of questions. Uh, yes, the enthusiasm and excitement for AMC Perfectly Popcorn at Home is real. I see it on Twitter. When I look at the readership of the tweets I've been putting out recently on popcorn, they're sky high. The likes are sky high. The retweets are sky high. The comments back to me, every single one of which I read, by the way, I got like four or 5,000 inbound messages on the popcorn tweets recently, and I read them all. Um, boy, they make me excited because you're excited about it. Um, we launched March 11, uh, uh, Oscar weekend, with end cap displays at Walmart. They're almost impossible to get, and Walmart volunteered them up to us because they're excited about popcorn. Um, and by late April, we'll be at 2,600, more than 2,600 Walmart stores. That's more than half of all Walmart locations in the United States. We will have a website where you'll be able to go to find out at what locations you'll be able to um, uh, uh, actually pick up boxes of microwave popcorn or bags of ready-to-eat popcorn. Uh, we are going to sell on Walmart.com, which, of course, is nationwide. I would expect it will sell on AMCTheaters.com. We're discussing whether or not we should uh, sell microwave boxes of popcorn at our theaters. Um, like, it's all new. We haven't started yet, and the interest level is very high. This is a nice position to be in when you're launching a new product. Let's put it this way. Um, we're setting up our production plants to make millions of bags and microwave pouches of popcorn. We think this is a big opportunity for us. Right now, we're going to launch only in the United States. Uh, Canada is a possibility. Uh, uh, if we did it in Europe, we would probably not do it under the AMC brand. We would do it under the one of the Odeon brands. Of our cinemas operate with their own distinct brands in uh, several countries in, across Europe. Uh, but right now, we're, you, know, you, you crawl before you walk, you walk before you run. We're going to start in the United States and see where it goes from there. Thanks, Adam. We continue to receive a very large number of really terrific uh, suggestions from our retail investors, uh, business ideas to grow and diversify and build on the business. And I want to say that we, uh, as a management team, review these, we investigate these. So please, um, investors, please keep these ideas coming. I think with that... Um, Let me just respond to sure. that one. What an oddity, a company that actually listens to its investors. How about that for a change? Yes, sir, you want to go to a question from an analyst, yes, maybe? I have questions for We're already sure. running a little bit long but if, if on this call today, but if any investor wants to ask, go ahead. Operator, we can go to questions from uh, analysts. Thank you very much. Uh, we will now be taking live questions. If you'd like to ask a question, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. A confirmation tone will indicate your line is in the question queue. You may press star 2 if you'd like to remove your question from the queue. For participants using speaker equipment, it may be necessary to pick up your handset before pressing the star key. So we have time for only one question, and we take question from the line of Eric Wold with B. Riley Securities. Please go ahead. Hey, good afternoon, um, Adam and Sean. I, I appreciate it. Um, I guess, as much as I'm looking forward to the uh, the popcorn business being a, a separately reported segment, um, <laughs> I have a couple questions on the uh, on the core the theater business. I guess I guess first off, um, hey, Eric, not to interrupt, but but you know what you're going to like more than our, how we report the popcorn results? Eating the popcorn. It's really good. We actually worked for a full year on the flavor profile of these products. They are really great. Um, I'm looking forward to enjoying it with the Oscars. Um, on, on the sight line feeding um, uh, plan uh, or, or program, I guess, um, obviously it makes sense given what we've seen with, with other entertainment businesses. I guess, what are your thoughts on where you see the biggest benefit coming from? Is it the premium on the better seats? Is it filling up the less desirable seats have their price lower? Or is it that 
you know, loyalty members don't pay the premium seat charges is the benefit driving more loyalty membership um, into that program? And the answer is all of the above. Uh, you've got the three benefits of the concept, right? We can discount up front and charge a slight premium in the middle. And we don't charge, the, you know, when I say the middle, you know, the dead center of the auditorium where most people want to sit. And if we don't charge that uh, premium and impose it on A-listers, that's just another big value increase for A-list members, which should make more people want to be A-list members. So all three have the ability to drive improvement. And, you know, some people have looked at this as a price increase, which, of course, it is on day one. But what's really interesting is that um, uh, we are in inflationary times. And inflationary times cause cost to rise, and without making any comment about what AMC is going to do, because it's not, it's not legal to talk about pricing prospectively, but companies facing inflationary pressures tend to raise prices, not talking about AMC. Under the pre sight line structure of our industry, if we wanted to raise a price in a theater, the only choice we had was to raise the price on all the seats in the theater. And so what's one, of the, one of the many benefits of Sightline, other than the three that you mentioned, are that if, if we feel the need to raise prices, we might only do it in the most popular seats in the auditorium and actually hold the line and not raise prices on other seats in the auditorium. So it's actually a way of, well, it is a way of increasing the price now it's a potential way of preventing a price increase uh, later on. And then there is, in fact, the opportunity to discount up front. I'm telling you, I've been looking at what we call heat maps, which are uh, the, the, what seats are booked for a particular movie. And nobody sits in row one in a movie theater. It just doesn't happen. It could be opening night of Star Wars, every seat in the auditorium in row Three to 18 is book solid and row one is empty. And it really is, there is a possibility here that by discounting the price up front, we might be able to expand the movie going market uh, to more price sensitive uh, consumers. Perfect, that's helpful. Thank you very much, appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have reached the end of the question and answer session. And I'd like to turn the floor back over to Mr. Aaron for closing comments. Over to you, sir. Thank you, operator. To everyone on the call, thank you for being with us today. Um, uh, today was a good day for AMC. We reported results that were unexpectedly positive. We introduced our popcorn line, uh, and we've had a lot of discussion about the importance of the March 14 shareholder meeting uh, that will simplify and strengthen the capital structure of this company going forward. Thank you for joining us today. There are a lot of big movies coming out. We look forward to seeing you at our theaters sometime soon. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that's, this, this concludes today's teleconference. You may disconnect your lines at this time. Thank you for your participation. Did he even say participation? I thought I heard another patient word. Hey, what's going on? Uh, the vaporization, <laughs> uh, the vaporization of that call is what just occurred. Uh, <laughs> and if you uh, if you have a broker, call them. Yeah, make sure that the broker knows that you yeah, you care about them. Uh, wh what was that? What happened? And then he and then he finished it off with, "This is a good day for AMC." Um, Let's see. Let's see where, where AMC is right now. <laughs> if you are new here and you're wondering, why would an earnings beat and uh, a bunch of other good news cause the stock to do this? Welcome to the stock. Uh, afterwards, it is down at $6.57. That's 8% down um, after hours, 6% on the day, of course. Uh, popcorn, huh? Popcorn ain't doing it, says Ryan. 
the only movie to make AMC squeeze would be a Adam Aaron and the Bag Holder Factory. Says hello, Lava Lamp. Juxtapose says thank you for my what? <laughs> Uh, vaporization. Thank you for the vaporization of uh, of popcorn. We did have some popcorn news. They did also touch on the lawsuit. That was the surprising part. Is that he was like, uh, this lawsuit, oh boy, don't let us go through with the vote, which we are very happy about. But uh, but the vote won't mean anything, which I guess we're not super happy about. Also, I believe he said something about raising prices now will be a discount later because later everyone else is raising prices. Uh, and then when you don't, then it is a... Uh, hmm. Well, for more insights like this, uh, make sure that you know that I'll be reporting on this uh, and just trying to summarize this into one video. Uh, if you guys are new, what's up? My name is Andrew. My name is uh, Andrew, and that's Professor Meatball. And um, we're here to talk about a little bit of the data on the side of why did this happen? We were tracking this downtrend here. It was a it was a bearish flag in the beginning, carried through the entire pattern. Um, we were looking at a potential breakout of at the seven dollar and ten cents point. Right, this would have been at the fifteen MA. Uh, moving average did continue to cap us over and over again. Uh, if we had the VWAP, it would be something similar. There is a potential for a double bottom here at six dollars and fifty cents. We are seeing some support here. We are actively trying to push against. Uh, the vaporization. <laughs> uh, that was that was maybe some poor choices of words from Mr. Adam Aaron, especially a little bit of the logic as well was missing. And you know how much I love logic. I'm uh, where's my Jim Halperin? I'm. Didn't you know that I'm Jim? I'm a ninety percent match for the <laughs> for Jim. Um, we uh, we are looking at whether or not people liked it. Let's see what you guys are saying. Everett D's. D's what? Uh, says N. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, Hello, Lava Lamp says, bro said AMC could be vaporized at any second. Dandy Jandon says, that's for your votes. Call the broker if you haven't gotten your votes to not, not to have a nice day. <laughs> uh, sarcasm. Uh, let's see. Lawrence JS says, worst earnings call ever. Could have just said, hey, last quarter was crap for movies, but hold on, Michael Keaton is coming to save AMC. <laughs> Carrot Ancient, what's going on? A couple of other views said hi while the, uh, the actual call was going on. Appreciate you guys for sticking around. If you guys are still out there, thanks for uh, saying hi in the chat. Could not respond because my hands and ears were tied listening to that vaporization. <laughs> Slow Mojo says, feel deeply saddened. Uh, Richard Klein, OMG, so now a reverse split will cause the mother of all short squeezes. <laughs> uh, yeah, we need patties. Everdees says, uh, Adam Aaron should have probably had Professor Meatball speak. Probably would have done better. Meatball, what do you think? Meatball did get a treat for all of y'all slapping the like button. I do appreciate that. Um, those of you who kept saying slap the like while the ch the call was going on, I should appreciate that. Uh, I just got back from Southeast Asia about a couple weeks ago. Um, that was doing research for the musical that I was writing. Uh, so that's why if you guys haven't seen me, hey, I'm here. I'm going to continue creating financial content, uh, a little bit of the financial entertainment that you guys are used to, not the, edu uh, not the advice, but the education, um, looking at potentially other pieces of content that you guys might be interested in. So make sure that you guys are still continuously clicking and staying tuned for more vids. <laughs> Good duck joke. What's the TLDR on this quarterly earnings for AMC, says Roxas. Uh, generally, we did pretty darn good. Not as good compared to Q4 of 2021, but better than analysts originally thought. So movies or uh, movies people did not watch it during the uh, winter, but in the future, we're going to do some popcorn shenanigans, and, uh, and we'll see how this reverse dot split goes. Uh, <laughs> Brandon Lee. Br Brandon? Who is that? Uh, uh, lots of people here do uh, know nothing about business, as Benjamin Cross. Business, what is it? Where's that guy with the who is businessman? Bla Matt Blair comedy says, do you think he's incompetent or corrupt? I think maybe he was just looking at the stock um, on his like smartphone or something. Or there was that slurp. Did everyone hear that during the actual call? That was like, and then they glugged up the. <laughs> <laughs> the soda. Uh, then someone's like Alexa or smart speaker went off. 
during, it, it all seemed like it was from Adam Aaron's line, so it probably it was Adam Aaron um, getting a nice, <laughs> getting a nice soda, tasty. Uh, yeah. Ever D says hello from Japan. Hey, hello, hello. Those of you who uh, stuck around in the very beginning, I appreciate it from jumping on each of these streams. Make sure that if you guys did not get a notification to slap that bell icon next to the subscribe button. And those of you who have always supported the show, I do appreciate it being part of the, whoop, being part of the Moon Platoon is uh, a beautiful, beautiful thing. And those of you who have made this show possible, I salute you. And for now, but not for forever, see you guys in a future stream just as shiny as this one, just as nice, just with a little bit of extra flair for the magical. And for now, but not for forever, I'll see you in the money. Peace. Goodbye. Goodbye. Have a nice day. Farewell. <laughs>